Broadcasting live, it's the Friday Night Football Zone, brought to you by your local McDonald's of Bluffton and Hilton Head, only on WHHI-TV. Live from Hilton Head Island Community Stadium, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek here, week three for us here on The Zone. It's a big week, Tim. In all, in all sports, we've got the U.S. Open in tennis. We've got the start of college football. And we've got continuation of high school football here on Hilton Head Island in tonight's matchup between James Island and the Seahawks from Hilton Head High. We've got a Class 3A school with the Seahawks against the Trojans of, in, in 4A. Big matchup tonight. Last year, this was a big win for the Seahawks en route to their region title. It was, too. The Seahawks from Hilton Head last year were 8-3. and three. They had the reverse record at James Island. They were 3-8. and eight. So basically what you had was a, a very good Class 3A team beating a not-so-good 4A team, which James Island is. That's, a, that's the bigger school. But tonight, talking about bigness, one thing James Island has are five huge offensive linemen, maybe the biggest offensive line in all of South Carolina football. They have three players that are over 6 feet 3 and 300 pounds. We'll get more into that as, as we get into the game. But the Seahawks have three of their big starters that they were missing last week in their loss to Buford. They got them back in the lineup tonight. And they were suspended last week. They missed the game against Buford, and I, and I think that probably accounted for the reason why they didn't play Buford as well as they did last year. But they're back in the lineup tonight. That's the good news, Tim. And I think we're going to see some uh, uh, a former punter. That's Jeff Homeward. He's in his senior year to 6'2". 200-pound senior is starting at quarterback. But in speaking with Coach K uh, Tim Singleton, he said if Jeff doesn't get the offensive going in the first half, he won't hesitate to, uh, to reach into his freshman quarterback, Michael Julian, to come in on the field. And it, it, a lot of, lot of folks have called Julian a freshman stud. Singleton said, no, no, not quite yet. A <laughs> pony. A stud in the making. But as we were saying, they get three of their starters back. Clifford Morrow, who leads this offense in yardage coming back from last year. Forrest Bryan and Jaquan Cohen, one of their speedier players, also in the backfield tonight for the, uh, for the Seahawks. Another one of their returning yardage guys, Lawrence Jenkins, who was the backup a lot of last year, but a speedy guy that can get to the corner quick. Yeah, a lot of speed, and Coach Singleton is going to want to get that ball to the outside and some short passes. What he's seen last from last week's tape with James Island is that they like to blitz, particularly off the corner. And if they do, he won't hesitate to get it to one of his three speedy wide receivers on a quick slant or some kind of uh, type of release pattern where they'll be able to uh, protect Homeward and get that ball away without the pressure. So James Island coming off a loss to Cross last week. They're 0-1. Hilton Head Island 0-1 coming off a loss to Buford again without some of their starters. So they will be back at just about full strength tonight. They will be without one of their quarterback rotation, Desmond Bush, who just happens to be the star student of the month for the Seahawks, but he will be out tonight. He's a great student athlete. His dad helps with the team. He's on the coaching staff, and uh, we wish all the best to Desmond. We, we thought maybe we'd see him play tonight, but we want to mention his name. He is the star of the month on Hilton Head Island. Homad was able to hook up with Victor Frazier on about a 30-yard pass touchdown last week. That got him moving in the right direction. They kind of stumbled from there. So again, Homad will get the start tonight with uh, uh, John Beaver and, uh, and Michael Julian in reserve if if Singleton doesn't see what, it, what he likes. And we have a number of players for the Seahawks going both ways. There'll be five players playing on both sides of the football, offense and defense, for the Seahawks tonight. I just remember one name we called out a lot last year, Jack Dwayne. He's wow. back this year. I'm and glad he, you mentioned his name. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he, he's... He, a lot of heart and spirit, and he's really the soul of the team, I think. And he made an awful lot of plays for him defensively, and for him to turn around and play and, and serve as an offensive guard, that's really quite an accomplishment. He epitomizes the Seahawks team. The motto here is pride, passion, and performance. We're going to see them try to live up, that, up to that tonight against the James Island Trojans. We'll come back, take a look at a little more preview after the break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. I guess they're stars and then they're superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most. It was the most. Yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, uh. Are you bringing value? 
That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Oh, salt a dog. Oh, salt a dog. You're sly as a fox. You salt a dog. Captain Cherokee sitting in a tree. A kiwi waving back at me. I want you to be the salt of dog. Oh, salt a dog. Oh, salt a dog. You're sly as a fox. You salt a dog. Down the south east, sitting by the dock, singing a song about a salt of dog. Honey, won't you be the salt of dog? H&H Auto Service is the home of the free inspection. H&H has been voted number one on Hilton Head Island and Small Business of the Year. H&H provides quality service for alignments, preventative and routine maintenance, and much more. Looking for an affordable car? H&H Auto is your full service dealer. All pre-owned cars are certified and come with a warranty. Everybody rides at H&H Auto because they finance in-house. Whether your car needs to look its best, run its best, or if you just need a new one, count on H&H to get you where you need to go. Welcome to the Blind Pig Saloon. Come in and enjoy an upscale American bar featuring the best in local and regional live music, dancing, two pool bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or you're ready for a night out on the town, come in and see what all the buzz is about at the Blind Pig Saloon. Hi, I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and healthcare, warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs, including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and mildew. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We will save you money and time. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, markseatingandair.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Mark's Heating and Cooling. Is a state champion wrestler. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone here at Hilton Head Island Community Stadium, Tim Wood and Chuck Zapek here with the action. So, as we said, both teams 0 and 1, and it looks like the Seahawks are going to get the ball first. There's the kickoff, a deep one. Back to field at number 12, that's Jenkins. Jenkins takes it in the end zone for the touchback. So, Jeff Homad, the senior, will lead the Seahawks offense onto the field for their first offensive series of the night. Tim, the Seahawks are coming off their third consecutive winning season. They averaged eight, eight wins per year during that time, and they had their first regional championship last year in, uh, in, uh, in the last 11 years. But they'll be hard-pressed to repeat, Tim. They've lost 22 lettermen from 2008, including their entire offensive and defensive backfields. You know, Tim Singleton heard the term rebuilding season when we were down on the field, and he immediately shut me up on that one. No rebuilding here at, at, at with the Seahawks. So home at under center, two in the backfield. Here's our first offensive play of the game. Homad going to the air. He is taken down. 
by number 43, that is Frank Howell, the junior. And already we've seen this big James Island team. You know, you expect this from 4A teams, but the Seahawks didn't see as much of it from the Trojans last year, but already Trojans setting the tone. Well, the pressure came off the ed off the edge, exactly where uh, Coach Singleton thought they would be. Able they might bring some blitzers. Doesn't look like the Seahawks were uh, uh, were able to execute properly. Two in the backfield, two out wide to the right. Second and 18. Homad fakes the handoff, pitch out. There's number 12, Lawrence Jenkins. We saw him all last year. Kept calling his name a lot last year, Chuck. The senior, one of the biggest returning yard gainers for the Seahawks. Uh, he's been an impact player ever since he uh, started playing, Tim. He's awfully shifty in, all, in, the, in, the, in the open field. Showed good heads up uh, by running straight ahead right through those tacklers and getting some uh, almost 12 yards on that game. Third and eight for the Seahawks. Two in the backfield. Homad quick to the side. That's number 11, Victor Frazier. Frazier not going to get the first down. Homad hooked up with Frazier last week for the Seahawks' first touchdown of the year. But no yardage on that on that play. Well defended by the Trojans from James Island. Number seven, Jacqueline Cohen was out there trying to throw a block on the, on the outside corner unsuccessfully. Now Jeff Homeward has to drop back and punt. So the Seahawks will punt from about their 10. Trojans just over midfield. Homag gets it up. A good deep punt. Backs him up. Trying to get the outside. Number 10. He's over the 50. Down to about the 39 yard line. That's number 10, Bo Patterson. That's the uh, that is uh, the son of the coach, John Patterson. And there is a flag on the play. Yeah, we, everyone saw that. Um, Block there on the edge of, of the corner of the punt return. Looks like they're gonna call it a block from behind, Tim. And take it back 15 yards from that spot. So good call there for the Seahawks. Back the Trojans up. This defense of the Seahawks gonna be led, as we said in the pregame, by number 62, the middle linebacker, Jack Duane. 82 tackles and a team high eight sacks for the Seahawks last year. Tim, we got a number of players going both ways, not just Jack Duane. Uh, there's also Cliff Morrow plays wide receiver. He's going to be lining up at free safety, number 10. And number 11, Victor Fraser, you'll see him as strong safety. So first play for the Trojans going nowhere as the Seahawks are all over it. Gain of a yard, brings up second down for Looks like number 62, that's Jack Dwayne. You know, he's a state wrestling champion, Tim, and he's their middle linebacker, and he's getting, he gets the calls from the defensive coach on the sideline. We'll probably be calling 62's number a lot tonight. Number eight, Chris Wilkins is the senior. He is the quarterback for the Trojans, one in the backfield. Hand it off to number 22. He's got room up the middle, breaks a couple tackles down inside the 40. That's number 22, Martell Johnson. And you called his name in the pregame, Chuck, a bruiser at fullback. 225 pounds. He gets going north and south here, and it takes down three. He breaks two tackles. He will four players to bring him down finally, Tim. Great run by number 22, Martell Johnson. And this line, as, as we've said before, this line for the uh, Trojans, huge. So under nine minutes to go here in the first. First and 10 at the 37. Wilkins drops back, looking down the left. He's got a man open. Complete to number 10, Bo Patterson, the junior. Uh, James Island comes out in a spread formation. Only one back kept in the backfield, along with the quarterback, Wilkins. He was able to catch the Seahawks in a little bit of zone coverage, and he threw the ball right down the seam that, it, that exists in just about every zone. So Great a throw. A couple plays for the Trojans, and they are inside the red zone. Wilkins hands it off again to the fullback, Martell Johnson, for a little bit of a gain. 
They're running a, not, uh, once again, only one back standing back there along with Wilkins in the backfield. And they run a little read option there where he gives the ball either to the fullback or pulls it out, sort of like an old belly series. And then he, the quarterback could do something with it afterwards. This time he gives it to the fullback for a short game. So second and eight, keeper by the quarterback, Wilkins. Flag on the play, Wilkins gets to about the five, but this could be coming back. Nice tackle there by senior Cliff Morrow, using all 5'10", 160 pounds of his body to bring down Wilkins. So indeed, this will back up five yards. So a little bit of a breather here for the Seahawks. They just substituted in one of their big defensive linemen, number 78. Melvin Fields comes out on the field. He's only a sophomore, but he's 250 pounds. So 8.04 to go here in the first. If you're just joining us, the James Island Trojans, Class 4A, they're inside the red zone. Second and 13. Wilkins back to pass. Across the middle, complete to number 16. That's Keith Moore for the touchdown. Well, this time it's the same pattern from the other side where they were able to get the quarterback to throw, look into the seam and just throw a perfect strike. Watch him set his, set his feet, hits the ball into a small window that exists and he's able to get the ball just over Lamont Williams' head for the touchdown. So already we see Wilkins had plenty of time in the in, in the uh, pocket there. Extra point, good. So it's seven to nothing. James Island, we will take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. It can be this big, that big, whatever, bring it on. Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it. So we built Sport Clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport Clips, it's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, seven nothing James Island as the Trojans march right down the field and put in a 18-yard strike from Wilkins to Moore for the touchdown. So Seahawks already fighting from behind here at Community Stadium. We saw a wide open offense by the Trojans and now we get another kickoff back into the end zone. That's an automatic touchdown, touchback in high school football. So the Seahawks have to start first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Well, this kicker, he's got a leg, so two straight in the end zone. Homad comes out trying to get something started for the Seahawks. We'll see how they respond after a quick strike from the Trojans. We saw them respond last year, Tim. You know, this Seahawk offense averaged 30 points a game last year, so they were able to come from behind when they had to. Homad in the shotgun, two in the backfield with him. A pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins fights over the 25 to about the 28 yard line. A good gainer on first down for the Seahawks. Yeah, nice job that time, getting the ball on the outside corner into the sideline. Make those big defensive linemen, look at those big guys up there, Tim, from James Island. Wow, some of those guys are going three bills. Make them run a little. <laughs> So Seahawks in, in the uh, hopeful second and short here as Homad under center, two in the backfield. Homad handoff inside to Jenkins and Jenkins fights for what looks like a first down. Yeah, the Trojans line up in a 4-3, your traditional 4-3 offense. Uh, there's no over shift or under shift by the defensive line. And you got a true middle linebacker. And this time they just run an inside trap and they're able to pick up the first down. So the Seahawks first first down of the game, they are out past the 30 to the 32. Homad, quick strike, high tomorrow. 
that was uh, that was one of the feature plays last year for the Seahawks. Yeah, that's the, the quick little slant that they're throwing. The Seahawks offensive backfield features Lawrence Jenkins as a running back, Jacqueen Cohen as a running back, and Michael Foshe as a fullback. Jeff Homard, former punter, also he will punt tonight, not just former. He's also the quarterback. That's your starting lineup in the backfield for the Seahawks, Seahawks tonight. Fodia won a battle with Ray Harrington for the starting position. So second and 10 for the Seahawks. Homad pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins fighting for yards in the backfield. Fumble on the play. Ball still loose, we'll see who's got it. James Island recovers the fumble. So. Well, sometimes you have to know just how to go down. You, you, you just, you can't, you're fighting for extra yardage. He gets hit from behind there. Nice tackle, he stripped. This play was well, well um, defense by the Trojans from James Island. And they're able to force the, the fumble out of Jenkins. So the Trojans in Seahawks territory again, first and 10, Wilkins to the air, plenty of time, goes to the end zone. Intercepted, oh, a great yep. play by number 10, Cliff Morrow. Wow. A, so the Seahawks answer right back as Morrow picks this ball off. Well, they don't waste any time going into the far corner of the, of the end zone, trying to go for the touchdown and get up by two scores, the senior, 5'10", 160 pounds, Cliff Morrow is able to come up with a fantastic leaping catch. So he, set a, he set a Seahawk rec record, reception record as a, as a wide receiver with 28, uh, 28 catches last year, Tim. He knows how to catch the ball. So we will have a timeout here on the field. 6.29 to go here in the first quarter. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. For the past 19 years, our family has been serving your family with all your packing and shipping needs. We've shipped the care packages to camp, dorm trunks to college, the party favors for the wedding, and eventually even the crib and the rocking chair. We've made color copies for your class projects, we've typeset your resume, printed your baby announcements, party invitations, graduation announcements, and wedding invitations. We have been a proud supporter of our community. From our family to yours, thanks for the opportunity to serve you through the years. Coming back here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Big defensive play by Clifford Morrow. He's used to catching the ball, and he's playing both ways for the Seahawks. He makes the interception and the end zone. So Homad and the Seahawks will start on the 20. Two in the backfield. Homad under center. Homad going to the air. He finds Jaquan Cohen for a short gainer. That's just a little fake to the fullback up the middle. Try to freeze the linebacker so that the uh, wide receiver can clear him and hit and uh, throw in between him and the safety. It's successful. It's a nice, nice throw and catch for a first down. Tim, we should mention, you know, the headliner is coming into this game for the Seahawks tonight. Jack Dwayne, which we already talked about, but Clifford Morrow, who made that great diving interception, he's also a three-time state champion and anchors the 1600 relay team. I guess. I can see why with that kind of speed. A little bit of speed, 589 yard receiving yards last year and already one big reception on defense tonight. Homad, second and five, going to the air again. Tries for Morrow, double coverage. Able to get the ball off, but a, a late flag on the play. We'll see what the call is way after the whistle. This one looks like it's gonna help the Seahawks, Tim. So what? It is against the Trojans. So as you say, Chuck, a little help for the Seahawks as they try to get past midfield. You know, Jeff Homeward, he is a senior, but he has not had much experience at quarterback. He's been the punter, as we mentioned. But uh, you know, I think he just needs to get a little bit of uh, times at the wheel here. So the Seahawks already back to the line at their own 42, first and 10. 5.41 to go here in the first quarter. Homad under center. Two in the backfield. Handoff inside to Jenkins. And Jenkins gets back. Well, he loses a couple yards on the carry. Quick oh. update for you here. Luke Sergo hits Ethan Gort for a 38-yard touchdown. 
Hilton Head Christian Academy leads Thomas Hayward Academy 7-0 with 10-18 to go in the first. That update courtesy of our friends at the Island Packer on their Twitter page. If you're at home tonight, IPBG Sports is the Twitter feed for those updates. So second and 11 for the Seahawks. Homad drops back, flag down on the play. Homad skips one to Morrow, incomplete. Oh, he was lucky just to get a, get out of that trap there. A lot of pressure coming from all over the place. Just one big sieve in the offensive line for the Seahawks. Tonight for the Seahawks, we have Forrest Bryan. He's starting center for the Seahawks, number 52. At right guard is Jack Duane, who you mentioned, number 62, uh, 62. Then there's Brandon Fox, number 65. The left guard is Anthony Jabulinski, number, number 75. And the left tackle is Hunter Anderson, number 72. As you see here in the crowd, a bunch of uh, student boosters for the Seahawks, the Blue Man group in the crowd tonight. So a little help. Is that what they were doing in the parking lot? All those guys uh -huh. painted blue? They were dressing up. So the blue men. Third and 11 for the Seahawks. Jenkins moves into the backfield. Two out wide. Homad going to the air. Short. And no yardage on a third and 11. A loss, but a completion to Jaquan Cohen. So Seahawks will have to punt. Yep. Pretty good call by Coach Singleton. And when you get in third and long, you're thinking screen draw, some kind of delay. This time he goes with the screen, but he had so much pressure on him, particularly up the middle. The Trojans ran a little cross blitz with the two inside linebackers coming up and crisscrossing, and that confused the Seahawks' black blocking scheme. Homad back to punt at the 25. A high punt just over midfield, takes a bounce. They'll, they'll try to return it, but they're not going anywhere as a slew of Seahawks take down Bo Patterson at the James Island 25. You know, he's quite a punter, Jeff Homart. He, he averaged last year 30, 37 yards per punt. That's quite an average for high school. No doubt, no doubt. He's got a, he's got a, a boot. We should mention Zachary Curitzi. Uh, Number 70, the senior, he was a snapper on that, on that punt, and he's had two good snaps in a row here, which helps the Seahawks gain some field position. Trojans trying to rebound off their interception last time. Man in motion. A fumble on the play. Dive. The Seahawks picked up by number 32. That's going to be Cody Forbes with the pickup. 11. Victor Frazier dive. Well, here's the replay. You see Frazier diving for the ball, but... Forbes comes up with the fumble. Inside hand up on that big thing for the crossing running back. Looks like he never really got it from the quarterback. Picked up by uh, number 32, Kobe Forbes. Makes a nice run out of it. The quarterback is able to come back and successfully make the, make the tackle. So Frazier does a great job. A little assist from Frazier. Frazier knocks it to Forbes. And the Seahawks defense helping out the offense. They're inside the red zone. Two turnovers already, Tim. Pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins has some blockers. Looks like he's got a first down to about the 10, well, no, about the five yard line. Great call here. Pitch into the sideline, student body right. What a great call. You have 11 men on defense, obviously. You're gonna be set to the open field, six of them. That means they're short one man into the sideline. Good call by Coach Singleton. Run that student body right with a pitch. Where they're, the short, where they're short one man. So first and goal for the Seahawks. They try to capitalize on James Island's second turnover of the game. Flag on the play. Well, why we got a second, another quick update for you. Buford strikes first against Battery Creek. Three yard strike to Alex Simmons from Brown. Buford up seven nothing with 5.19 to go in the first. So, flag on the play, half the distance to the goal, ball at the three yard line for the Seahawks. Homat under center, two in the backfield. Fodia gets to carry. Looks yeah, like a fumble handle. though. And James Island will take over. At, a, at about the one eighth inch line. 
never got the handoff. It's a missed, missed handle. Looks like the quarterback, Jeff Homar, never got the snap from the center. He just couldn't regain possession of the ball to give it to the fullback. Fodia, Tough break. Fodia never stood a chance there. So the Trojans take over deep in Seahawks territory. We've seen a lot of action here in the first quarter, Chuck. Only one score, but four turnovers now. Three turnovers. Inside handoff, going nowhere. Well defensed by the Seahawks. Well, you see the defensive backfield here. Yep, we got... Uh... Rakus is a cornerback. Morrow is a free safety. Fraser, strong safety. Jacque Jacqueline Cohen is a cornerback. Harrington, Dwayne, and Robinson are the three linebackers for the Seahawks this evening. Harrington, 76 tackles and four sacks last year for the Seahawks. So second and 10 at the goal line. Wilkins, another handoff. Trojans break it out to about the 15-yard line. So they get out of Deep trouble there. Yeah, Ray Harrington, who you mentioned, he's one of the strongest players on the team, Tim. 5'10", 185 pounds senior, number 31. So a, a first down for the Trojans. Timeout, James Island, 2.57 to go here in the first. We'll take a timeout as well on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Hilton Head Glidden Paint Store on New Orleans Road has been serving the island's professional and do-it-yourself painters for 25 years. Owned by Islanders David and Jeannie Harder, along with their Bluffton and Beaufort Glidden stores, they are big enough to give you competitive prices and experienced enough to save you time and money by helping you do your paint job right the first time. Whether you are a high volume contractor for matching the color in a pillow, personal attention and service is the cornerstone of their success. Well, we're back here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek, 7-0 James Island as both, both teams, four turnovers combined here in the first quarter. Well, Tim, we knew coming into the season that the Hilton Head Seahawks would defensively would have a couple holes to fill. They lost five all-region defensive players that are gone from last year. Defensive coordinator Howard Merrick has a major rebuilding project going on in his hands right now. Wilkins, a quick pass to the 25. That's number 22, Martell Johnson on the reception. Well, we got a second one. Thank McDonald's restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty third pound Angus burgers and world famous fries. You'll be loving it. So 2.32 to go here in the first quarter. Trojans recovered the fumble at their own three lot yard line and they are out to the 25 yard line. God, I love it how you describe that hamburger, Tim. You got to be careful. I didn't have dinner tonight. Me neither. Me neither. That Tell sounded me about great. It. Inside handoff, short gainer on the play. Down at about the 27-yard line. Yeah, some good, a good pop inside there uh, by the Seahawks, by uh, their linebackers Dwayne Harrington and Kenny Robinson. They're the returning star starters. For the Seahawks, that's really their strength or their is their linebacker play. Kenny Robinson was second on the team last year with 93 tackles. So they definitely bring back some, some uh, veteran defenders. See if they can make the stop here on second and eight. Wilkins in the shotgun. Another timeout on the field, this time by the Seahawks. They obviously didn't like what they saw there. So uh, timeout on the field. We'll take another one here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Proudly serving Hilton Head for over seven years, whether you are looking to celebrate a special occasion, take the family out to dinner, or catch your favorite sporting team on one of our 12 televisions, Mellow Mushroom is the place to be. We offer gourmet pizzas, gigantic calzones, fresh hoagies, and crisp cold salads seven days a week. Check out our full service bar featuring over 100 different beers. So next time the mood strikes, tell your friends and family. 
back here on the Friday Night Football Zone. A lot of action here in the first. Four turnovers thus far. Only seven points on the board. That by James Island. Second and eight for James Island. Wilkins in the shotgun. Quick strike to the side, the number 16. That's Keith Moore. A short gainer on second and eight. So the Trojans will face about a third and five. Well, it's a little bit, you see here on the replay, that it's just a little play action pass into the, into the sidelines, into the boundary. Just a quick short flip by the quarterback. I guess we haven't seen him go long after the last interception. Yeah, a little bit more conservative. I mean, beautiful throw, but Morrow was there for the interception on that long strike. So third and one for the Trojans. Wilkin under center, two in the backfield. Handoff. Johnson, the fullback, takes the takes it to, well, just over. They're going to measure. It looks like they have the first down. Yes, they do. So first and ten for the Trojans as time winds down here in the first quarter. They got to be able to stand up against that big Trojan front line, offensive line for this James Island. Wilkins in the shotgun. Looking deep. Nothing there. He'll keep it himself. A big gainer, about 10 yards to the 47-yard line for Wilkins. Well, while we got a second, I want to thank the Salty Dog Cafe. Get your Salty Dog t-shirt at the Salty Dog t-shirt factory located at South Beach Marina or on Arrow Road. Also available anytime at www.saltydog.com. Salty Dog Cafe t-shirts will suit you to a T. I get mine at the outlet store on Arrow Road, Tim. That's quite a place right there. It's, I owe you it's, one. It's hidden back there, but yeah, they, they yeah they got some good stuff. They do too. That's, that's, that's my secret place for shopping for Christmas and, and birthday presents. Absolutely. Who doesn't want a Saudi dog T-shirt or some other? You, we got to get you singing the uh, singing the slogan here a little later <laughs> after their commercial comes up. Set, uh, first and ten for the Trojans out near midfield. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Wilkins in the shotgun, man in motion, handoff, well defended, Patterson with the ball, that's the coach's son, he's over midfield to about the 44 of Hilton Head Island. Uh, missed tackle that time by Jacqueline Cohen, he comes up from his uh, strong, strong safety position and had him almost at the line of scrimmage, but nice juke by the running back to be able to Forge forward for an extra nine yards. That may be the last play of the first quarter. We've seen a lot of action here. Four turnovers. Nobody's capitalized as James Island leads 7 0 after the first quarter. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Yeah, I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most. It was the most. Yeah. You bring my arm dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Oh, salt and dog. Oh, salt and dog. You're sly as a fox, you saw the dog. Captain Cherokee sitting in a tree, with Kiwi waving back at me. I hope you be the saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. You're sly as a fox, you saw the dog. Down south, he's sitting by the dog, singing a song about a saw the dog. I hope you be the saw the dog. Beginning of the second quarter here on the Friday Night Football Zone, James Island Trojans, the Class 4A school, trying to avenge last year's loss to the Seahawks. They're up 7-0, and over midfield, Wilkins, the quarterback, He's going deep once again. He's got a man open. Wide open, touchdown Trojans. There's a flag on the play, Tim, in the area where he's usually either holding or some kind of 
roughing the passer. The senior, C.J. Mack, on the 47-yard reception, but that one is coming back. Well, what a break here. Mack got way behind the defense on that one, but obviously a reason there is the ball is, is going back on the Trojan side of the field, so a huge break for the Seahawks. Wow, he just lost a little bit of, of his highlight reel there. Too bad for the wide receiver. Tell you, this Wilkins, Coach John Patterson wasn't lying when he said Chris Wilkins has got an arm. We've seen plenty of it here in the first quarter. Both times, though, to no avail as one of them was picked off by Clifford Morrow. And this one, a uh, seemingly a touchdown reception to C.J. Mack, called back. And now the Trojans back on their side of the field with 11.51 to go here in the half. So Wilkins in the shotgun again. Four wideouts, one in motion, fakes and passes out to Patterson. Patterson's got blockers. First down and more for Bo Patterson. Well, you just can't ex execute that little wide receiver screen any better than that. Great job, nice blocking downfield by the right offensive tackle using his six foot five, 315 pound frame. And that's able to open up the field for Patterson to pick up that first down. So a first and 10 at the Seahawks 41 yard line as Chris Wilkins once again shows off his arm in that little screen. Man in motion again. Inside handoff, fumble. fumble again by Johnson. Looks like the Seahawks have got it. No, no, it's gonna stay, gonna stay with no, James Island. Lots of Seahawks in, in the vicinity. Once again, bad snap leads to this. The quarterback had to reach up for it, try to make a handoff. They're running that little crisscross. I sort of like this, the, the series that they're running with, out of the shotgun. Running a, a wide receiver coming across the face of the quarterback, then crisscrossing in an old cross buck fashion to the fullback and handing off just if they're having trouble hanging on to the football. We saw that cross buck a lot last year with the Bluffton Bobcats. Uh, Trojans have run it pretty efficiently, save for the, uh, for the, for the fumbles here. Action in the backfield. Makes it confusing for the, the uh, linebackers who are trying to follow the ball a lot of times. That's why you have to really be able to, as a linebacker, re read your keys and not follow, not look at the ball, but look at the offensive linemen and look at their blocking schemes. Second and 10, Wilkins rolling out, trying to pass. Oh. He is not gonna get it off as number 28. That's Kenny Robinson. Been calling his name a lot tonight. As you see, he is all over Wilkins. Yeah, Kenny Ro Ro Robinson, he's the senior linebacker. He shows his speed coming from all the way over. From the quarterback. A great read by the Seahawks defense. And now the Trojans will face third and 19. And they are taking their time trying to figure out just the right play as they keep uh, leapfrogging back and forth across midfield. Wilkins, flag on the play, he's keeping it. Over the 40, down to about the 37. He'll be shy of the first down, but as we said, a flag on the play. This one looks like, well, it was in the vicinity. A legal procedure against the Trojans. Good looking play here. They run the quarterback draw. And there was a blitz coming up the middle. The quarterback was able to slip by Jack Duane and he had a lot, a big alley right up, running right up the gut of the Seahawk defense. Unfortunately, James Island using the old cliche, shooting himself in the foot, a little undisciplined here, committing another error with the penalty. Quick updates on our rivalry games across the region. Ridgeland and Hardyville scoreless after their one quarter. Buford still up on, on Battery Creek, seven to nothing after the first quarter. So, third and forever here. Third and 24 now for the Trojans. Back across midfield at the James Island 47. So a lot of sloppiness here. Force fumbles, four turnovers, a couple more put on the ground. 
Trojans. We'll see what they got in the shotgun. Wilkins in the shotgun. He faked going deep last time. Goes to number 85 this time. 85 first down and, and more. That is the sophomore, number 85, K.J. Smith. And he is a big man and a big gainer there for the Trojans. Tim, hard to believe James Island only has seven points here. Once again, they're able to uh, throw. They're in man coverage this time. The, the coverer turns his back. Quarterback sees that. When he sees the back of the helmet, he knows just to lead the receiver a little bit, and he's got a chance to make the grab. That was a great throw by Wilkins. We've seen him make some pretty good throws all night long, Tim. Absolutely, and, they, and the offensive line, not the only big players, is Smith, a sophomore. Huge, and comes up big for the Trojans there. Inside handoff to Johnson. He is inside the 10, down to about the six for the Trojans. So an inside handoff to the fullback. No fumble this time. Well, this time Wilkins lines up on their center, takes a snap directly, and they just run a little option, or a little belly series down, down there, gives it to the fullback coming straight up the line. I like that in this situation. Once you get into that red zone, 20 yards and in, you're able to give the ball to your best running back very quickly. Offensive line fires off, taking advantage of their size advantage over, over the Seahawks, and they quickly are able to get the ball to the running back who can gain a lot of positive yards. So James Island up 7 nothing already as you see Jaquan Cohen walking off the field. We'll see what, what his injury is as he hobbles off. S up 7 nothing are the Trojans, then they are about six yards away from another score here with 9.21 to go in the first half. Wilkins will line up under center, two in the backfield, including Johnson. Handoff inside, going nowhere as Kenny Robinson and number 15, Lamont Williams all over the play. This time the Seahawks are able to defend it. It's just a smash play, lead by the fullback coming Tailback following him. The Seahawks dig in in their goal line defense, get a nice hard charge out of the sixth defensive lineman up front, and they're able to stop that play. Well, that was Patterson this time. He's a little smaller than, than uh, Johnson, and it showed there on that carry. So second and goal for the Trojans. As they're inside the five. Wilkins keeps it, finds a hole, dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. So a five-yard QB keeper by Chris Wilkins. And another score here puts James Island up 13 to nothing. I like this play a lot, Tim. I think once you get inside the 20-yard line, you got to get into a situation where you're not lining up in a spread offense all the time. And this time what they do is they line up with the quarterback underneath the center and are able to run an option series there. And, th and that's, a, that's a great way to run it because... When the quarterback comes down the line and down on an option, there's nobody to cover him. Everybody is assigned to the backs, but not to the quarterback. So the kick up by Jeff Wilkins, the kicker, good. So 8.34 to go here. 14 and nothing, James Island here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. You saw our producer there, Tom Wilkins, in the uh, Palmetto Exterminators suit. Is that Tom? He says it's not, but I think it is. He's, he's deny, deny, deny. Oh. But uh, he does just about everything else at WHHI. I find it hard to believe he's not in the mascot suit. So, 8.34 to go here in the half. 14 and nothing. James Island spoiling the Seahawks' home debut thus far. Kickoff on the play. Looks like it's going to be offsides against the Trojans. But, Tim, the kickoff once again goes into the end zone. That's three kickoffs into the end zone. This, this is quite a kicker for, for uh, James Island. Flag on the play, so he will, uh, Wilkins will have to kick it off again. 
While we're waiting here, I want to thank Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control, family owned and operated, protecting people's health, their property, and the environment for over 40 years. That's Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control. So, a re kick here for Wilkins. See with uh, a few yards back if you can get this one in the end zone. No, this one a little a little short kick. Out of bounds, so another flag. And the Seahawks will get excellent field position here as they try to respond to the first two scores here by the Trojans. Quick update for you while we wait for the flag. Chris Wunsch from Bluffton today checking in from Berkeley as the Bluffton Bobcats on the road against 4A Berkeley. They are down 21 to nothing late first half. So an expected outcome, unfortunately, there for the Bobcats. We don't have any word who is starting a quarterback for the Bobcats tonight, do we? Well, they said uh, Jeremy West was saying he, that he was going to run both of them this week, going to go with both with Desmond Jenkins and with Ryan Combs. Jenkins was hurting with the same flu that Combs had last week, so uh, probably going to be uh, Combs for most of the game. Complete on the first play. Morrow breaks one. He's over midfield. So a little screen pass from Homad to Cliff Morrow and a big gainer for the Seahawks as they are out over midfield down to about the James Island 39. Nicely executed and, and a great throw and a nice block on the outside. Uh, by the inside receiver, which allows Morrow to gain all those extra yards downfield. Well executed, Tim. A flag on the play, unfortunately, though. That ball is coming back over midfield. So the first big gainer of the game for the Seahawks negated on the penalty. Oh, that, that hurts. Really hurts. They're making a holding call on that. Legal use of hands there, yes, on the Seahawks. So that will back them back up to about the Seahawks 38. And a dead ball foul on the, on the Seahawks called there. Who's that on? Is so that on the sidelines? That one's on the sideline. Tim Singleton and crew not liking it at all. So that ball's backing up even further to the 28, so tack on 10 more yards, actually 15 yards down to the 23. So this goes from a uh, drive starting to first and 37 for the Seahawks. Homad in the shotgun, Jenkins in the backfield. Homad rolls out, goes deep, looking for number 11, Victor Frazier. Nothing doing, a little overthrown there from Homad to Frazier. Yeah, but great call. And Homad showed he's got he has some great a great arm there. They ran a little sprint to the right. He sets up, takes off, sends number eleven down the field, makes a long pass, just missed. A gutsy call there. We're not we're uh, <laughs> nothing new as far as what we see from Coach Tim Singleton. He's got a lot in the playbook and not afraid to use it. Well, he's stretching the field right now with the with those wide receiver screens and then throwing the ball downfield. Homad under center, handoff to Jenkins. Jenkins gets out to the 30, out to the 35, met by a quartet of Trojans at the, about the Seahawks 36. Well, great, great run here. But um, the, as he takes the handoff, looks inside, sees the pressure, runs on the outside, picks up a, a nice block by number seven. That's Jaquan Cohen, helps him out, makes a nice move. Lawrence Jenkins is able to Scat his way. This is a makeable third down. This is what, third and 14, Tim? Third and 13 for the Seahawks at their 37 yard line. After that last game, absolutely makeable. So, Homad under center, one in the backfield. Homad's going to go to the air. Good blocking. Homad finds Cohen. Cohen looking for room, makes a spin. Gets out over the 40, but he's about eight yards shy of the first down. Well, Jaquan sets up the screen here. It's set up 
almost perfectly, but when he catches the ball, rather than t going inside, he chooses the wrong way where he had all the help was inside. He chooses to go outside where he has no help, and that's the reason why the play is unsuccessful, Tim, for a first down. Had he turned inside, he had three blockers, and he, I think he would have uh, gotten some, maybe come close to a first down. So Seahawks will have to punt as they have, well, it looked like they had a response, but a couple of big penalties set them way back in their own, in their own territory. Official timeout on the field. Well, we'll see what they're uh, calling. Well, no, back, back to the action. Homad back to punt. Not much of a breeze here, Tim, but what there is down on the field, it's blowing in Homad's face. High snap, Homad catches good punt down to about the 30 and met by the Seahawks. Met by number six, John Beaver on the tackle. So 14 nothing Seahawks with 6-12 to go here in the half. Good snap by the center. Last year the Seahawks had a little bit of problems with the snappers. This year, number 70 is handling, handling the, uh, the duties. Zach Kiritsi, he's a senior, but this is his first year playing football. Looks like he found a, something to do to help his team, and that's snap the ball and long, be the long snapper on punts. Quick update from Hardyville. Eight nothing Hardyville over Ridgeland on a night and touchdown for the Hurricanes. So first score of the game there. While well, we got a second, want to. While well, we got a second, want to thank H and H Auto, another one of our fine sponsors. Customer friendly, guaranteed quality, the number one place for auto sales and service on Hilton Head. That's H and H Autos, another one of our fine sponsors, making the Friday Night Football Zone available to you, our fine viewer. A lot of fine people there. I, I uh, a little short on adjectives tonight, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a, for you, Tim, I mean, Mr. Bluffton here, I mean, uh, you a know, how could a, a Fordham, Fordham graduate, I, a former I, tennis player, I Fordham wrote graduate. I wrote about 6,000 words today. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I can't believe it. We got a newspaper scribe here running out of words. Oh, first and 10. See if the Seahawks can make a stop here. Wilkins under center, one in the backfield, two flanking him, one in motion. That's Patterson in motion, handoff to Johnson. Johnson going nowhere. He stopped at about the 31. Great job by Howard Merrick's front four that time. Quarterback lines up on, under center, fakes the pitch and makes an inside handoff, but great tackling by the Seahawks as they swarm all over the runner. So five. 40 to go here in the half, 14 and nothing, James Island. Timeout on the field. Trojans take a timeout. We'll take one as well on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Been in a wreck? Bring your car to H&H &H Auto Body at 17 Cardinal Road. At H&H &H Auto Body, you'll get a free estimate in their state-of-the-art facility. No matter the damage, the great team at H&H &H Auto Body will have your car looking great and back on the road in no time. You're watching the Friday Night Football Zone on WHHI-TV. Brought to you by your local McDonald's restaurant of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek, here at Hilton Head Island Community Stadium, home opener for the Seahawks, 14 and nothing James Island, Class 4A school ahead right now, and they've got the ball again. Second and eight, Wilkins gonna keep it, follows his blockers out to about the 38 yard line. Tim, I'm having fun watching number 78, Melvin Fields. He's a six foot, 250 pound sophomore defensive lineman going up against a guy that's six foot three, 315 pounds. He's in a lockup with him. And uh, so far, uh, I've been impressed with the sophomore. He's getting his initiation under fire. 
So third and three here for James Island. Big defensive stop time for the Seahawks. Wilkins under center, he's gonna go to the air. Going deep across the middle. He's got a man open, that's Bo Patterson. No, wait a second, that's number 17, the senior Matt Porter for the big gainer, down two, the Seahawks 20. Wow, third and short. A little play action pass here, draws in everybody, including the, the corners from the Seahawks defense, allows 17 to get behind them. Great throw by Wilkins. We've seen them make a number of fantastic throws right on the money. No doubt, right into the hands of number 17, Matt Porter. Lawrence Jenkins makes what might have been a uh, touchdown saving tackle there. So Trojans inside the red zone again at the 19 yard line. Wilkins in the shotgun, handoff inside. Just a little bit on the carry down to about the 19. So quick update for you from Battery Creek as Creek gets on the field. Gets, gets on the scoreboard, eight yard TD pass from Stedman James to Alex Sharp, extra point, no good. Buford up 14-6 with 5.37 left in the first half. So, four A schools taking care of business against our class three A schools thus far. Fumble on the field, Wilkins fumbles it. Looks like James Island, looks like Johnson, a very heads up play, is able to get back on the ball for James Island. Almost recovered by number 55, that's Luke Bar Barnes. He nearly gets to the football, but he makes sure the quarterback doesn't get it as he buries his head into the dirt and makes sure he stays there. That's only a freshman. And they're, they're, they're playing some guys that get some experience right now to see off. I think Barnes, he, he might have thought that the ball was, was still with, with uh, with Wilkins there, but the ball skipped away and Johnson able to get on it, but that backs the Trojans up to about the 31. Third and long here for James Island. Wilkins going to the air, plenty of time. Gonna have to scramble with it. He'll gonna have to take it himself. Back to the original line, he's got, he's got it to the 10 yard line. This is gonna be <laughs> awfully close, so a big gainer there on the QB keeper. Wow, watch the Wilkins. quarterback. Look look at the quarterback. He's gonna pull the ball down and, and now he becomes a middle scrambler. Middle scramblers are usually great runners. Well, he dips out and makes a reverse field. That's a Doug Flutie meal move when you reverse the field coming out of the quarterback uh, box. But now he makes a great run down downfield. He looks like a jackrabbit on his way into the frying pan as he's able to scoop by everyone. Wow. 15, Lamont Williams makes a big tackle there to stop him from getting the first down. Gonna be fourth and one for James Island. They're gonna take a timeout to talk it over. We'll take one as well here. 14 nothing James Island on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Welcome to the Blind Cake Saloon. Come in and enjoy an American upscale bar with the best in dancing, live music, two full bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or if you're ready for a night out on the town, come on in and see what the buzz is all about at the Blind Pig Saloon. Hi, I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all of your janitorial equipment and supply needs. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and healthcare, warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs, including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and mildew. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We, we will, will save, save you money, money and time. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, fourth and one. Big stop time for the Seahawks. Wilkins hands off inside to Johnson. Johnson has the first down. Inside the five yard line to about the three. So it will be first and goal for the Trojans. While we got a second here, want to thank McDonald's restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty third pound Angus burgers. 
and world famous fries. You'll be loving it. So winding down to two minutes to go here in the half. First and goal for the Trojans. Hilton Head trying to stop it from a three score deficit. Handoff inside at the goal line. Once again, Tim, we see James Island lines up with the quarterback under the center and just runs a straight dive or just a um, straight lead play with the fullback leading the way over the right side of the Seahawks defensive line. Bo Patterson reaching for the end zone there, but about a yard short. So time ticking down, Trojans at the one, Wilkins under center, Patterson and Johnson in the backfield. Wilkins will keep it, it looks like he's in. No. See what the call is. No call yet. No call. Well, I thought he leaned in, but no, don't the think the officials agreed. Quarterback, quarterback keeper, he just ran it like a sneak, but he got all the way over to the left tackle and he got stood up on his way in there. Once again, quarterback was just a little too high. If he stayed and lowered his shoulders, he might have had a better chance of getting in the end zone. Where are we, Tim? Was that the one inch line? It has got to be about the center meter line there as we're under a minute. Third and goal. Seahawks making a great stand here at the goal line thus far. Wilkins under center. He'll try to keep it again, but he's stuffed again. They're going to down no pile. No call it. yet. They're going to down pile. No, it. they're yeah, calling there it is. touchdown. I'll tell you. I've been wrong twice here. I, I thought he, he got in. He didn't. I thought he didn't get in. He got in. So Wilkins with the keeper. 20 to nothing. Trojans. As we see here. I tell you what, that was a that was a great penetration by the Seahawks, but when you're at the inch line, not a lot you can do. So. Well, they were down there in a in a very low charge. They were able to stand up that big offensive line of James Island. PAT up and good by Jeff Wilkins, 21 to nothing. Seahawks down three touchdowns with 41.5 seconds to go here in the half. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it. So we built Sport Clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport Clips. It's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Singleton, Hilton Head Island Seahawks down 21 to nothing here with 40 seconds to go in the half. Not what Singleton had on the menu to start the game here. Kick from Wilkins. Another offside, number 41. He was the guy, he, the culprit on the last kickoff that brought him back five yards. This time he's offsides again. I think the coaches are gonna have a little word with that young man at halftime. Two kickoffs in a row going offsides. Well, you know, the uh, Seahawks will get a couple more yards here off the kickoff. Nothing doing in their drives thus far. And uh, there's, been some, there's been some rays of hope. A couple of strikes from home ad to uh, Morrow. But, uh, and Jenkins has looked pretty good, but no sustained drives. No points on the board. So a little, a little uh, they got it, quick and they onside it up. kick. James Take Island it, ball. James Island. It does go. It goes the uh, 10 yards. Troy Roper, the junior, recovers the kick. And Tim Singleton on the sideline, just, just not happy at all talking to his players. As, wow. As the Trojans will have one more shot inside Seahawks territory with 35 seconds to go here in the half. This is the call from upstairs. This is why you have a spotter up in the box. When you see that the five front linemen are, are only 10 yards away from the ball and then the next level is almost 20 yards down the field. 
Wilkins to the sideline to number 10, Patterson. So Patterson gets out of bounds on the sideline throw. But on that kickoff, Tim, they were able just to pop it up over the offensive lineman and get it into an open area, and it was picked up cleanly by the James Island player. They tried it once, and he kicked it a little too far, went out of bounds, penalty. Yep. It is, uh, if we say that, a penalty on the field here. We'll see what the call is. James Island seems to think it's on them. Nope, flag waved off. So... Second down for the Trojans at the Seahawks, 38. Wilkins in the shotgun, four wide. Looking for somebody, Wilkins out, flag on the play. He goes sideline, complete to Matt Porter, but as we say, a flag on the play, and that's going to be a hold against the Trojans. What a great touch by the quarterback here. Watch him as he sprints out there. The receiver turns up field, and he makes a beautiful toss. Leads him, floats it right in there to the open man. Great play by the quarterback. But uh, as you see on the, on the play there, Martell Johnson, the fullback, on the hold, and that's going to back up the Trojans, back past midfield with 18.4 seconds to go. So we'll see if they uh, – we know they have the, uh, the quick strike – down the field ability with the arm of Wilkins. Getting some good inside pressure there by the defensive tackle. That's Barnes, number 55, the sophomore we've been talking about. He's the one that's getting held, and he almost, almost gets held again. Unfortunately, he's going to get called for roughing the passer right now. Wilkins goes to Porter, and a flag on the play. As Chuck said, roughing the passer call. So Seahawks extending the drive here. So, you know, I don't know, if, I don't know if this is worst case scenario because with all of the uh, offense from the Trojans, they could have more points on the board. Seahawks have made some stops and some big defensive plays, but they find themselves down three scores, 21 to nothing here. Roughing the passer, so ball at the 38 yard line with 12.4 seconds to go here. As we've said, Wilkins has the, uh, the strike ability. C.J. Mack out wide. He's the speedster. See if they try one more to the side. Big pressure. Wilkins goes across the field incomplete. Wilkins makes a nice move. Be able to slip the, 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 the grass of number 32, Cody Forbes, who comes right up the center on a safety blitz right into the face of the, of the quarterback. But he was able to elude him and make a throw down the field. It almost ended up in a completion. Through the receiver hands. dropped the ball. Through yeah. the hands of number 10, the junior, Bo Patterson. As we said, the John Patterson son. John Patterson, a 30-year veteran of high school and college coaching. Up 21-0, looking for more. Quick strike to Patterson. Patterson down to the 20. Will he get down in time? Yes, he does. Calls the timeout. With 0.4 seconds to go in the half, they'll down the ball for the first down. See if they can get the ball off. Wilkins under center. They get it off and he downs it, but well, <laughs> they call a penalty on the play as the clock calls. Well, nope, they call off sides. Seahawks. Uh, Legal procedure. Seahawks say no thank you. Halftime here at the Nest. 21 to nothing Trojans at the half here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Take a break and come back and break down the first half here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. For the past 19 years, our family has been serving your family with all your packing and shipping needs. We've shipped the care packages to camp, dorm trunks to college, the party favors for the wedding, and eventually even the crib and the rocking chair. We've made color copies for your class projects. We've typeset your resume, printed your baby announcements, party invitations, graduation announcements, and wedding invitations. We have been a proud supporter of our community. From our family to yours, thanks for the opportunity to serve you through the years.
Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Marks Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, MarksHeatingAndAir.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Marks Heating and Cooling. Hilton Head Glidden Paint Store on New Orleans Road has been serving the island's professional and do-it-yourself painters for 25 years. Owned by Islanders David and Jeannie Harder, along with their Bluffton and Beaufort Glidden stores, they are big enough to give you competitive prices and experienced enough to save you time and money by helping you do your paint job right the first time. Whether you are a high volume contractor or matching the color in a pillow, personal attention and service is the cornerstone of their success. Proudly serving Hilton Head for over seven years. Whether you are looking to celebrate a special occasion, take the family out to dinner, or catch your favorite sporting team on one of our 12 televisions, Mellow Mushroom is the place to be. We offer gourmet pizzas, gigantic calzones, fresh hoagies, and crisp cold salads seven days a week. Check out our full service bar featuring over 100 different tiers. So next time the mood strikes, tell your friends and family. Yeah, I guess they're stars and then they're superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most. It was the most. Yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Oh, saw the dog, oh, saw the dog, you're sly as a fox, you saw the dog. Captain Cherokee sitting in a tree, a kiwi waving back at me, but I want you be the saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog, oh, saw the dog, you're sly as a fox, you saw the dog. Down the southeast, sitting by the dog, singing a song about a saw the dog, but I want you be the saw the dog. Been in a wreck? Bring your car to H&H &H Auto Body at 17 Cardinal Road. At H&H &H Auto Body, you'll get a free estimate in their state-of-the-art facility. No matter the damage, the great team at H&H &H Auto Body will have your car looking great and back on the road in no time. Here at the Friday Night Football Zone at the Nest. Well, the Seahawks find themselves down 21 to nothing at the half to Class 4A James Island. We are here with uh, Sam McDowell from the Island Packet. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? You're uh, busy Twittering? Yeah, yeah, we're all Twittering tonight. Oh, uh, absolutely. We're following it, I'll tell you. Chuck, Chuck looks at me, he's like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm following the Twitter feed on that. <laughs> IPBG Sports is the Twitter feed. We've been, we've been letting the fans know I tweet. I, I'm you able to tweet. Tweeting? Yeah, don't worry well, about the, that. These guys are tweeting fools. They're all over the games around the region. Well, uh, Sam, here, not looking so good so far for the Seahawks. No, and to be quite honest, I'm surprised. I thought Hilton Head would have a better showing, and maybe they will out here in the second half, but... This passing game from James Island is just really, with Chris Wilkins, is really giving them fists, and they haven't found an answer for it yet. I mean, he, he's, I mean, they, they've had some penetration, but for the most part, he's had all day back there. They've got a huge offensive line. Yeah, they do have a big offensive line, but even more than that, it seems like even when they get a guy back there, he's able to scramble and make a play out of it. I mean, he's only thrown two incomplete passes tonight. He's nearing 200 yards in the first half, which you don't see very much of that in high school. Football. I was going to say, when's the last time? I don't think we saw that at all last, last season. No, we didn't see any passing quarterbacks last season for the most part. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously Hilton Head is replacing all four guys in their defensive backfield. Ahmad Aiken's the big one, and they're, they're kind of missing the, some leadership back there, I think. They're shuffling guys in and out back there because most of those guys are two-way players, too, and you can tell they look a little bit worn down on those, on those deep balls. Morrow made a great uh, interception on that deep ball, and they've had the, you know, a lot of, lot of turnovers there in the first half, but James Island, it, I mean, even with the turnovers, they just uh, passing at will. I mean, it, Wilkins really looking impressive. Yeah, and I think uh, I thought the Morrow interception might do a little bit more to flip the momentum of this game, but uh, they got to get him involved offensively. He doesn't have a catch tonight, and he's their biggest playmaker on offense. We saw the one play he had for 21, 22 yards get called back for a penalty, so he's too fast to leave him out of the offense, and I think they'll, we'll see Hilton Head try to work him more in in the second half. I mean, if, if you're Tim Singleton, do, do, you, do you keep home at in? He hasn't looked awful. He overthrew Morrow a couple times on quick slants, but... Uh, you know, n no points on the board. That's that's the ultimate decider here. Right. He's only got six yards passing. He hasn't thrown many incompletions, but they're all everything short. Now, I don't think you'd mind seeing him throw short if you can get it to Clifford. But uh, with, with the other guys, they don't have the breakaway speed that Cliff has. I do think he'll stick with home at uh, Desmond Bush is battling the flu tonight, so I don't think we'll see him. We might see a little bit of John Beaver, depending on the second half goes. But I'd, I'd expect him to come out with, with home at and to see how the first couple drives go. You know, uh, Singleton, Coach Singleton said to us on the sidelines before the game that if this one got out of control, he wasn't going to be afraid to put Michael Julie in him. A lot of, a lot of people talking up this freshman, but, uh, I mean, do, do you think he would be that bold to put the freshman in here to start the, start the second half? Well, I, I think he probably sees Julian as kind of his, his project there. And Julian, when you see him practice, his athleticism immediately stands out, and you think, Wow, they got to get him on the field. You know, he can he can be a receiver out there. He, he's a kid that only a freshman, but in a few years we're going to see him really highly touted, really highly recruited. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe maybe if it gets too far out of hand, he will give him some playing time. Julian is not going to be a kid that's going to be wide eyed. He's going to be ready to go once they get him in there. We've heard a lot about him. I'm looking forward to see him. Didn't want to see him under this scenario. But anyway, Sam McDowell from the Island Packet, want to thank you for joining us. We'll update the scores after the, after the half. Much much thanks to the uh, the, the Twitter feed of, of the Packet and the Beaufort Gazette. But, Sam, as always, uh, first time with us this year. Hope to see you many more times down the line. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I'll be Twittering with you, Sam, All right. on WHHI-TV. <laughs> Welcome to the Blind Pig Saloon. Come in and enjoy an upscale American bar featuring the best in local and regional live music, dancing, two pool bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or you're ready for a night out on the town, come in and see what all the buzz is about at the Blind Pig Saloon. I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all of your janitorial equipment and supply needs. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and healthcare, warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs, including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and mildew. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We, we will, will save you money, money and time. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, MarksHeatingAndAir.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Mark's Heating and Cooling. I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most, it was the most, yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Oh, saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. 
Just sly as a fox who saw the dog. Captain Cherokee sitting in a tree, with Kiwi waving back at me. I hope you be the salt dog. Oh, salty dog. Oh, salty dog. Just sly as a fox who saw the dog. Down the south east, sitting by the dog, singing a song about a salty dog. I hope you be the salty dog. H&H &H Auto Service is the home of the free inspection. H&H &H has been voted number one on Hilton Head Island and Small Business of the Year. H&H &H provides quality service for alignments, preventative and routine maintenance, and much more. Looking for an affordable car? H&H &H Auto is your full service dealer. All pre-owned cars are certified and come with a warranty. Everybody rides at H&H &H Auto because they finance in-house. Whether your car needs to look its best, run its best, or if you just need a new one, count on H&H &H to get you where you need to go. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Well, uh, Tim Wood, Chuck Z uh, Zapek here. Chuck, 21 to nothing, James Island here to start the second half. If you're Coach Tim Singleton, I mean, you know, Wilkins had, a, as Sam McDowell said, about 200 yards passing. Could have had more without the penalties. What do you do if you're the Seahawks here to, to, to stop the bleeding here in the second half? Well, you're going to be able to get that defense off the field. They have a young, inexperienced defensive line filled with freshman and sophomore uh, players, and they've not been put, putting a lot of heat on Wilkins, and that's what's allowed him to have the time to throw the ball downfield. So I would try to get somebody in there to run a different type of offensive set. Obviously, James Island came out prepared for Jeff Homeward and the sets that they were running. I would put maybe a running style type of quarterback in there. Maybe somebody could run the sprint option or the sprint draw or run, run down the line option. Something just to change the momentum and be able to get that defense off the field and get some first downs and some positive yards. Give them a rest. Get, get, the, get the offensive lineman and charge them off the, line, off the ball and see if you can't get back in the game that way. That's what I would do. Been a bizarre first half. Don't feel like, like the Seahawks have played awful, but yet a lot of yardage put up. And at the same time, it could be worse than it is, but it's 21 to nothing here at the half. We're going to come back. We'll get you up to date on some rivalry scores across the region here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Welcome to the Blind Pig Saloon. Come in and enjoy an upscale American bar featuring the best in local and regional live music, dancing, two pool bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or you're ready for a night out on the town, come in and see what all the buzz is about at the Blind Pig Saloon. I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all of your janitorial equipment and supply needs. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and health care, warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs, including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and mildew. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We, we will, will save you money, money and time. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, markseatingandair.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Mark's Heating and Cooling. Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it. 
so we built Sport Clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport Clips, it's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, you see the time ticking down here to the second half. Want to get you up to date on a couple of scores around the region. As we've been saying, some rivalry games around the region. 14-0 uh, Hilton Head Christian Academy at the half. Luke Sergo with a couple TD strikes to Ethan Gort. And uh, Tootin with three interceptions for Hilton Head Christian Academy. The last one stops, uh, stops Thomas Hayward at the four-yard line. So... 14-0 there, 14-0 Hardyville against Ridgeland, 14-6 Buford against Battery Creek, and 21-0 Berkeley up there in uh, North Charleston as, as the Class 4A Berkeley uh, is having their way with the Bluffton Bobcats, that courtesy of Chris Wunsch with Bluffton today. The rest of the scores, much thanks to the Island Packet tweeters. That's probably Justin Jarrett, Sam McDowell, and and uh, company for the packet. So uh, 21 to nothing here, and uh, a good crowd on hand here from Community Stadium. Well, we got a second. I just want to uh, uh, send a couple of shout outs. First of all, to Tom Gardo. He's always on the ball with us. Uh, the first one to hand us rosters when we get in the stadium and uh, gave us this beautiful uh, Hilton Head Island High School Seahawk Power Game Program, very nice program produced by the Seahawks. They always, the Booster Club always does a phenomenal job with that. And uh, Principal Amanda Onan, and, oh, oh, Amanda Onan, and uh, Athletic Director Lou Kent, great job out of them. Well, it's 21 to nothing here. Seahawks, it's go, it's uh, gonna be a Trojan ball to start. So. No good news there. You see Homad, we see Homad warming up on the sideline, so it doesn't look immediately like Tim Singleton's looking to make a change. But something has to change here for the Seahawks here in the second half. Well, the coaching skills are gonna be tested here tonight, Tim, to see how far uh, they're, they're able to get regroup and get their team back on the field, back in the game. You have the experience in the wrong position, though. All your coaches and coordinators, they're all experienced. It's the players down on the field who aren't that experienced. Your defensive players and even Jeff Omar, who's not played badly, has not had a lot of snaps as a quarterback in repetitions. You know, and, and, and again, like I said, to end the second, to, to end our halftime show there, it didn't feel like, like he was playing that badly, but it only added up to six yards and, and no points, no real penetration by the Seahawks, no sustained drives. Uh, didn't feel awful, but didn't no no excitement there on on the offensive side for the Seahawks in the first half. As you see, Jack Dwayne, one of the captains for the Seahawks, meeting with the officials to start the second half festivities here. Well, as we said, uh, Trojans will have the ball to start up 21 nothing here to start the second half. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek here from Hilton Head Island Community Stadium. Kickoff forthcoming from number 45. That's Weston Mott. A pretty good kickoff by the Seahawks down to the 10. Taken Whoa. by the Trojans up the middle. Breaking free, that's number 17, Matt Porter. 10, five touchdown. So worst case scenario for the Seahawks as Matt Porter wow, is able at, to break free. That's a shame. Jack Dwayne went down there and busted the wedge, but uh, he took out three people in the wedge, but the runner was able to elude him and s continue straight up the field, north and south. Nothing fancy about that, Tim. So the senior Matt Porter with a 90-yard kickoff return. A decent kick by the Seahawks, but again, Porter breaks the wedge and uh, 27 to nothing here. 
14 seconds into the second half. That was an impressive return by Porter. Coach Tim Singleton is just shaking his head. And, uh, of, of, well, what we got here? Of, on the Seahawks, so that ball will move a little closer to the, to the goal line. Well, Coach Singleton played for Hilton Head High School back in the 80s before he went to Newberry College. A funny story we heard this week. Brian Kitty was Brian Kitty, one of the coaches for the Bobcats, uh, the baseball coach for the Bobcats too, but coaches the running backs for Bluffton. Uh, as you see, the extra point here. We'll tell that story after the break here. Extra point, good. 28 nothing, James Island, here on the Friday Night Football Zone on WHHI TV. For the past 19 years, our family has been serving your family with all your packing and shipping needs. We've shipped the care packages to camp, dorm trunks to college, the party favors for the wedding, and eventually even the crib and the rocking chair. We've made color copies for your class projects, we've typeset your resume, printed your baby announcements, party invitations, graduation announcements, and wedding invitations. We have been a proud supporter of our community. From our family to yours, thanks for the opportunity to serve you through the years. On the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek, 28 to nothing. James Island after the 90-yard kickoff return by Matt Porter, the senior. So four scores to make up for the Seahawks in their home opener. Well, let's see if we can shed a little light on this, Tim, and see if the Seahawks can't get back in the game. Kickoff from Wilkins, big kickoff. This one at the goal line, not in the end zone. Wilkins takes it, and Wilkins gets out to the 10. So that's where the uh, Seahawks will start. While we got a second here, want to thank the Salty Dog Cafe for sponsoring the Friday Night Football Zone. Get your Salty Dog T-shirt at the Salty Dog T-shirt factory located at South Beach Marina or on Arrow Road, also available anytime at www.saltydog.com. Salty Dog Cafe t-shirts will suit you to a T. I'll tell you what's a lot of fun down at the Salty Dog, Tim, is it's, it's a fall now, a little Oktoberfest and some oyster roast. John Beaver in at quarterback for the Seahawks, hands it off to number 12 Jenkins. So, a switch at quarterback to the 185-pound senior, John Beaver, number six. He saw some action last week in the opener against Beaufort, and he's back here for the Seahawks to start the second half. A short gain by Jenkins on the play, four yards, so second and six for Hilton Head Island. Beaver under center, two in the backfield, Jenkins deep. And a pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins gets it back to the line, out to about the 12. Well, 35 to nothing the score up at Berkeley. Berkeley having their way with Bluffton. And 21 to 7, Buford over Battery Creek. Josh McPherson with a 90-yard kickoff return for Buford. 21-7, just 20 seconds into the second half, north of the broad in that rivalry. Big third and eight here as John Beaver tries to get something going for the Seahawks. Looks like we got an equipment timeout, or it could be uh, an injury, a little blood. Jack Dwayne on the sideline looking for some help. He will have to come out of the play on, th on third down. Beaver in the shotgun. Cohen out wide. Beaver drops back. Looks for Morrow, deep for Morrow, broken up by number eight. Number nine, that's Cordario Williams, the senior. Well, Coach Stillington doesn't waste any time to try to get the ball. The, uh, his speedster, Cliff Morrow, pretty nice pass by Beaver for the first attempt of, of, the, of the night, Tim. So, yeah, a good throw by, by Beaver, nothing doing as, as uh, 
James Island breaks it up, so a three and out for the Seahawks. Homad will be back to punt on the goal line. Another quick update, 42 to nothing now. Berkeley over Bluffton. Homad, high snap, ball out of the end zone. That will be a safety. So, a kickoff return and now a safety for James Island. 30 to nothing, the score here at Hilton Head Island Community Stadium. At the nest, we'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Hilton Head Glidden Paint Store on New Orleans Road has been serving the island's professional and do-it-yourself painters for 25 years. Owned by Islanders David and Jeannie Harder, along with their Bluffton and Beaufort Glidden stores, they are big enough to give you competitive prices and experienced enough to save you time and money by helping you do your paint job right the first time. Whether you are a high volume contractor or matching the color in a pillow, personal attention and service is the cornerstone of their success. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek. Well, a uh, safety on the punt as the snap goes over Jeff Homad's head out of the end zone. 30 to nothing, the score here, and the Seahawks have to kick off. Mott kicks it to the 30, Porter with the return again. He's broken free again, out to midfield to the 50. So Porter with another return, but a flag on the play. Wow, Jack Dwayne once again runs down, takes on the wedge, head first and takes out three guys. This time, fortunately, there's some other Seahawks around in order to make the tackle. Great effort by number 62, Jack Dwayne. As we mentioned, he's a state champion wrestler. Goes both ways. So the ball going back 10 yards, a hold on the Trojans. So the Trojans will start from the 40. Chris Wilkins back in at quarterback in the shotgun. Quick pass out to Bo Patterson for the short gainer, about a yard on the play. Defensive coordinator Howard Merrick has to be pleased with the effort by his defensive team. They really are running to the football. There's a lot of speed out there on the field. They're playing hard. They're playing a responsibility. Things just aren't going their way, though. What they really need is an offense to get some first downs to get a drive here and give them a little bit of a rest. They're overworked right now. There's some oxygen. Overworked, underpaid. Second and eight. For the Trojans, handoff inside to Jackson. Jackson, big gainer. First down and more as he breaks to the outside. Over the 40, down to the 37 yard line goes Martell Johnson, the 225 pound fullback. Well, but a flag on the play. Wow, look at this run. Just knocks over one would be tackler after another. Wow, I tell you. Knocks over Kenny Robinson, knocks over Cohen. Yeah. There's the penalty for holding. in there on number 19, C.J. Mack, it looks like. So, ball coming back from the spot of the foul. Second and nine for the Trojans. The Seahawks in the game in the first half for some penalties by the Trojans. They gained an awful lot of yards that have been called back. The quarterback had 200 yards passing in this first half. He probably had another 100 yards and yards pulled back. Man in motion, Wilkins quick pass out. Finds his man. Patterson cuts across the middle, first down and more. Bo Patterson to the Seahawks 42 yard line for another first down. Just under nine minutes to go here in the third quarter, 30 to nothing. It was 21 to nothing to start the second half. A kickoff return by Matt Porter and then a safety as a snap goes out of the end zone on a punt. That's where we find ourselves 30 to nothing here as the Trojans are driving once again over Seahawks into Seahawks territory. Well, we knew that that big offensive line for James Island might be able to outman the Seahawks, but now they're just getting run over. There's missed tackles. 
Porter takes the ball on the misdirection. Out for nine yards. You'll see that here. There's a missed tackle uh, on the running back. And we've seen a number of times. You know, that's that's when you can tell that you're you're really out, man. This is a 4A school playing a 3A school. And the big difference between one level of competition to another in football is tackling. If you ever want to see what's the difference between high school and college or co college and pro, it's always tackling. Jaquan Cohen down on the field, so we'll have an injury timeout here as they attend to Cohen. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Proudly serving Hilton Head for over seven years. Whether you are looking to celebrate a special occasion, take the family out to dinner, or catch your favorite sporting team on one of our 12 televisions, Mellow Mushroom is the place to be. We offer gourmet pizzas, gigantic calzones, fresh hoagies, and crisp cold salad seven days a week. Check out our full service bar featuring over 100 different beers. So next time the mood strikes, tell your friends and family. Yeah, I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most important. The most, yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Second and one for the Trojans on the 34 yard line. Man in motion. Wilkins will go to the air. Across the middle, incomplete. A little bit overthrown, a little bit of the receiver tripping. So a third and short. They've been running from the spread formation, um, this little uh, little play all, all night long. It's really like the Wildcat offense. where they, But now instead of having a running back taking the direct snap from the quarterback, you have a, uh, from the center, you have a quarterback taking the direct snap from the center. He makes the fake to the crossing uh running back on every play and then he either runs a draw up the middle with the remaining running back or he throws the ball downfield. Third and one in the shotgun. Wilkins will keep it himself. He's got the first down and more to the 20. Taken down at about the 19. So another first down for the Trojans. Well, Tim, we know coming into tonight's game that they had James Island, maybe the largest offensive line in all college uh, high school football in the 2009 season, they've got three players over 300 pounds, and they all stand over six foot three, over six feet three. So that size is just worn down the Seahawks tonight. Chad Hamilton, number 73 at 315. Shotgun formation, pitch out to Porter. Porter. Going nowhere as the as the Seahawks defense makes a big play in the backfield and takes down Patterson on the play. And that's Forrest Bryan, number 52, playing left defensive end. He's been running. He's been playing really well all night long. Great play. Great effort by the senior. We said uh, big offensive line. The other ones, number 77, Jerron Harrison, 6'3", 315, ding, and number 71. <laughs> Jalen Hill, 6'1", 250. Number 78, Terrell Brown, 6'4", 270. So they are biggins. Second and 15, flag on the play. And then uh, don't forget Chris Johnston, 6'2", 295. So the, uh, so the small guy's 250. <laughs> That's crazy. And the Seahawks, they don't have a defensive lineman over 250. So the officials deciding on the penalty. Seahawks could use something to go their way here with 8-6-23 to go here in the third quarter. Well, we got a second. I want to thank Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control, family owned and operated, protecting people's health, their property, and the environment for over 40 years. That's Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control. One of the great sponsors here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Second and 20 
for the Trojans. Wilkins in the shotgun, three out wide to the right. Empty backfield. Quick strike to the left, that's Johnson. Johnson accelerates, five, ten, into the end zone. 10-5, touchdown. They show up in a set that we've not seen all night long. We've not seen an empty backfield. They get five quick receivers. They come right down the middle to Johnson, the fullback, who spread out, and boy, he, he makes one tackle or a miss, and he's in the end zone in no time. Well designed and executed play. Second and 20 on the 30. 30 yard touchdown strike from Wilkins to Martell Johnson. That makes it 36 nothing. Here comes the extra point. Perfectly executed by the Trojans and good. So 37 to nothing here. We've got a blowout, unfortunately. We'll be back on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Oh, saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. You're sly as a fox, you saw the dog. Captain Cherokee sitting in a tree, the Kiwi waving back at me. I hope you be the saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. You're sly as a fox, you saw the dog. Down the southeast, sitting by the dog, singing a song about a salted dog. Honey, won't you be the salted dog? Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, 37 to nothing. Your score, James Island, over the home opening Hilton Head Island Seahawks. Tough night here at the Nest. Quick update for you, 21-12 now. Battery Creek with the score. 21-12 Buford late in the third. So kickoff here from the nest. Deep into the end zone, another touchback. This kid, 42, Jeff Wilkins, the senior. So Chris Wilkins at quarterback with the gun and uh, Jeff Wilkins with the boot. So another touchback for the Trojans. That was a uh, Stedman James connection with Alex Sharp for 41 yards to put Creek within 21-12, two-point conversion, no good, 9-20 to go in the third, up there north of the broad between Battery Creek and Buford. So, we'll see who's in quarterback, that's Beaver in at quarterback for the Seahawks. We'll see if we see any of the freshmen, number nine, Jeff Homad. Uh, we'll see if we see Jeff Homad back or if we see uh, Michael Julian in the game. Either. Number three. And Tim, things aren't looking too good for the Seahawks right now. 37 nothing. About the only thing looking good for them are the cheerleaders. I think we should mention their names. Senior captains Lori Pence, Tara Fenn, Samantha Paris, and Kelly Lloyd. They've been doing a great job down on the sidelines, keeping the spirit up, even though their team's down by 37 points, Tim. It's a good crowd for the home opener. To this crowd's credit, nobody going anywhere. As it's 37 to nothing. Beaver in at quarterback for the Seahawks. Under center, one man in the backfield. Beaver rolls out. Strike to Jenkins. Incomplete to Jenkins, so. No, they call it complete. I, I, he waved it off, looked like uh, incompletion, but on first down, Beaver to Jenkins. Well, we see Jenkins, as a, he's really a running back, making a, 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 a catch like that, like a wide receiver. Out to the 31, Beaver with the completion. One man in the backfield, two out wide, one man in the slot, that's Cohen. He'll, he'll roll out this time. Beaver will keep it out to the 35, off one tackler. Can't get away out to the 35. Yeah, Beaver makes something out of nothing, Tim. And this is the versatility that he has over his counterpart, Jeff Omar. A little more versatile. He's able to make some positive yards out of a play that didn't look like it was going to go anywhere. In fact, it looked like the play was going to be stopped for a loss. And he's able to pick up for, uh, four, four yards on first down. So coach Tim Singleton getting a look at uh, John Beaver here. Beaver in the shotgun. Well, it's two surrounds him. That's no, number that's three, Julian. Julian. Julian in a quarterback, guns it out to Cohen. So the freshman gets into the game as, as Singleton's gonna go to the platoon here. 
So Julian runs off the field. He'll be one and out as uh, Beaver runs back in after getting the play from Tim Singleton. Little experimenting going here on the, going on on the sidelines here, rotating the quarterbacks. Trying feel to, I feel like I'm back with the Dallas Cowboys now, hey, Tim. Trying to get anything going here. I was there when we were rotating Morton and Staubach in and out of the lineup. How is Staubach ever out of the lineup? Anyway, <laughs> Homad tipped ball, trying to go to Morrow. Morrow got hit on the play, incomplete. That was Beaver. Beaver. No, I'm saying oh. Beaver to Morrow. Morrow, oh, oh, Morrow is I'm walking sorry. to the sideline there with his hand it looks like he, he took a uh, elbow in 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 the ribs so fourth and five at the Hilton head 36 Michael Julian in they're gonna go for it well fourth and five Julian no Julian will go out wide yeah so a little, oh, two quarterbacks yeah a little looks wild, like the Eagles cat. Eagles with Michael Vick Beaver takes the snap, pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins fights to the first down. Oh, gonna be the spot. He looks like he got a good it. spot. Oh, he is getting a good spot. So he does get the first down. So a little oh, creativity good call. there. Great well played. Oh, good read here. Beaver comes down, reads the defensive end coming in. Great block down the field by number 31. That was Ray, Ray Harrington that helped out on the corner there. And that's the reason why the Seahawks have a first down. Jenkins tiptoes the sideline to the Hilton Head 42. First down here under five minutes to go here in the third. Hilton Head trying to put together a drive. Beaver rolling out. He's going deep down the sideline for Cohen. No, nope. and for Frazier, a little overthrown to Victor Frazier. Incomplete. Well, this looks like uh, Donovan McNabb and Michael Vick out on the field. You have two quarterbacks out there, Tim. So they, a penalty against the Seahawks. So they will get backed up on the drive here on fir first down. Chop block on a defensive end, engagement. That's the only thing I can think of. This is a big, anyway, it's 15 yards. It's gotta be a chop. Yeah, it is. Chop on a defensive end. So they, they run a little. on the. Well, it's back, backing up the Seahawks. Yeah, I know. So it's on but it, it's against the Seahawks. Right. But it's a, it's a, they Not chopped the defense man. Oh, they chopped, oh, they chopped the on the defense. Okay, right. sorry about that, Chuck. Uh, Beaver rolls back. A little quick out oh. to Jenkins. Threw his hands incomplete, so it'll be second and 25. Good call by the coaching staff. Just wasn't executed proper, just 100%, obviously. I feel like that's the first time you and I, in our entire existence here on the Friday Night Football Zone, the first time we didn't, weren't communicating well. I communicate better with, with you than I do my own wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, Beaver in it off, in, in at quarterback, two in the backfield, second and 25. Little draw to Jenkins. Jenkins fights to the 30, taken down by number 21, Rakeem Alston. Yeah, nice move here by Jenkins to get what he got out of this. Great tackle, though, from behind. Just a jersey tackle pulls him down. He almost broke out of that. I think there's still a little bit of spirit and fight left in him, Tim. Third down, and we got Beaver coming back in the lineup. Michael Julian keeps wanting to go onto the field, and Tim Singleton has to go, hey, whoa, 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 stay here. It's Beaver's turn. Third and 20. Winding down to four minutes to go here in the third. Beaver in the shotgun. Little screen to Jenkins. Jenkins breaks the tackle to the 40, and he is pushed out of bounds by number 41, Quentin Williams, at the Seahawks 42. So... Jenkins gets back some of the yardage on. Oh, great job by Jenkins. Dump. Great job. And nice job of the offensive line. Makes number 21 miss. Takes a hit at the end of the play. I'd still go for it here on, on fourth down. What do you got to lose at 37 nothing, Tim? They are going for it. Beaver fourth and in nine. There. Fourth and nine at the 40, eh, 42, 43 yard line. Yeah, you're moving the ball a little bit. Why yeah, not? Absolutely. Other than that chop block. So Singleton didn't like what he saw. He calls timeout. We'll take one as well here 
on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Been in a wreck? Bring your car to H and H Auto Body at 17 Cardinal Road. At H and H Auto Body, you'll get a free estimate in their state-of-the-art facility. No matter the damage, the great team at H and H Auto Body will have your car looking great and back on the road in no time. Fourth and nine, Beaver sacked on the play by number 35, Will Turner. So the Seahawks go for it on fourth and nine and sacked. So turnover on downs and the Trojans will take over. While we got a second here, want to thank another one of our fine sponsors, H&H &H Auto, customer friendly, guaranteed quality the number one place for auto sales and service on Hilton Head. That's H&H &H Autos, the best friend of the Zapek family. <laughs> hey, you know how stressful it is, Tim, when you have an auto accident or something, you have to go in there and get your repairs done? They have the no stress zone, stress-free zone at H&H &H Auto. Handoff from Wilkins to Patterson. Patterson fighting out to the Hilton Head 26. So, turnover on downs and a short field now for James Island. Kind of surprised to see the the uh, junior quarterback Chris, uh, the senior quarterback Chris Wilkins still in there for the Trojans. But after after the 26-21 win by Hilton Head Island on James Island's field last year, they may be looking to put it to the Seahawks. And so far, unfortunately, they have. Put it is putting it mildly, Tim. Another quick update for you. Buford scores on a 19-yard run by Alex Simmons to go up 28 to 12 on a Battery Creek fumble on a punt return. So handoff up the middle, about a five-yard gain for Martell Johnson on the carry. Well, it looks like the Seahawks could use some of their heroes and her, uh, heroes from the past. They really need a pass rush to get in here on top of the quarterback. They haven't had that all night. We have not seen any sacks of the James Island uh, qu quarterback. Where's Wayne Simmons when you need him? Wayne played here at Hilton Head High. Absolutely. Along with the New England Patriots and Green Bay Packers. Handoff from Wilkins. First down and more. Inside the 10 goes Johnson for the first down. You know, you know who's a uh, who's a uh, James Island alum is uh, Roddy White, oh, the really? Atlanta Falcons first time Pro Bowler last season. Wow. Under uh, Matt Ryan, so Roddy White doing doing good for the Falcons. I took him in my fantasy draft. <laughs> I feel I feel good about Roddy White. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't put the jinx on him. So under two minutes to go here in the third handoff from Wilkins to Johnson. Johnson takes a couple Seahawks down to about the seven. I got my man Brady. I got my man Tom Brady in the first round of my fantasy draft last night as you see the replay here. Yeah, just a lead play by the fullback running off tackle. I mean, this is just as basic as basic plays can get. Not trying to embarrass the Seahawks here. Take it. I'm going to take a risk with Brian Westbrook. You know, everybody thinks he's so injured, but I look at the stats, and he's and he's played 14 games, at least 14 games, okay. last six seasons. So I'm going to take a shot with Westbrook. The Villanova Wildcat grad, grad still has a lot in him. I think so. So uh, second and seven, Wilkins short hop. 
No, they call it complete. Touchdown. And they call it a touchdown. So, touchdown to Bo Patterson. Yeah, he makes a uh, tackle or miss here on the outside. It's they, they play it well. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a great it. catch by Patterson. They nice gave, replay by yep. Tess Rose there. Great camera work by Brent Nelson up on the uh, camera up above. So 43 to nothing here at the nest. Definitely the worst blowout we've seen here on our short time on the zone. And the extra point is good. 44 to nothing now. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Yeah, I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most important. The most, yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Here on the Friday Night Football Zone, you see the cheerleaders trying to keep the crowd into it. A good crowd here for the home opener at Hilton Head Island Community Stadium, AKA The Nest as the Seahawks are having a rough night down 44-0 to the Class 4A James Island Trojans. Tough night for both Bridge Bowl participants as the Bluffton Bobcats are down 42-0 to Berkeley. Big kickoff again from Wilkins, another touchback. That kid might have a future. Oh, I think he definitely has a future if he's kicking over 60 yards into the end zone every time. I can't see why any one division, one, division one eight or one school isn't going to be interested in him. Big leg. Uh, just about the only only time we haven't seen a touchback is when they did the little uh, little squib that they recovered. Yeah, but that that that's a finesse kick. That's sure. a finesse move. Sure. To be able to just do a little pop up over to uh, the front line, first five guys, kick it about 20 yards downfield, and have one of your uh, coverers go down and recover the kick. That's Beaver, Beaver in at quarterback, quick strike, incomplete to number seven, Jaquan Cohen. So the Seahawks have just been unable, other than, other than recover, after the fumble recovery, they had good field position, but as far as the offense taking them on an extended drive, it just has not happened here tonight against the Trojans defense. You're right, Tim. The last drive was the best drive of the night where they got the ball out to at least midfield. Now we got Michael Julian coming in, the freshman, six foot four, 165 pounds. He's gonna be lining up under center. He is the project. One in, uh, two in the backfield. Fumble on the snap. Looks like Julian was able to recover. Well, as we wind down here to end the third quarter, I wanna thank McDonald's restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty third pound Angus burgers and world famous fries. You'll be loving it. Well, Beaver's back in the game now for third and 10. Julian's off the field. Morrow out wide on third and 11. Beaver rolls the other way to Frazier near the first down marker. They call it complete out at the 31. Gonna depend on the mark. He's just over the 30 yard yeah, they won't marker. Even, they won't even measure. Looks like he's got the first down. Yeah, great, great grab catch. here. Great catch. Yeah. Well, we wind down the third quarter. Not a good one for the Seahawks as, as James Island puts another 16 points on the board. 44-0 as we head into the fourth quarter here at the Nest on the Friday Night Football Zone. From WHHI TV. Oh, it's all the dog. Oh, it's all the dog. You're sly as a fox. You saw the dog. Captain Cherokee sitting in a tree. A kiwi waving back at me. I hope you be the soft dog. Oh, saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. Oh, saw the dog. Die as a 
box of salty dog. Down south he's sitting by the dock, singing a song about a salty dog. Honey, won't you be my salty dog? zone as you see a rough start to the fourth quarter nice pass but dropped by Clifford Morrow so 44 to nothing I'm not a math major uh, it was 23 points by the by the Trojans as they double up the score in the third quarter to make it 44 nothing what did you major in at Fordham I majored in communications odd enough I, uh, I speak real Good. <laughs> <laughs> so Beaver under center, pitch out. Nice play to Jenkins. He's got some yardage. First down and more. Nice play by Lawrence Jenkins out to about the Hilton Head 42. Yeah, great, great job to the open field. Quarterback makes the right read with the defensive end crashing down. He's able to make a quick pitch, and Jenkins uses all his speed to the wide side of the field to pick up. The first down. Nice job, but a senior running back. So Class 4A having their way in Beaufort County tonight is uh, James Island here and Beaufort up 31 to 12 on Battery Creek early fourth quarter. Under center, Jenkins in motion. Beaver out to Frazier. Frazier over midfield. He breaks a tackle. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Victor Frazier. So just what the doctor ordered from John Beaver to Victor Frazier. In goes Frazier <laughs> for the touchdown, 44 to six. Frazier does not go down. Hey, there we go. And he goes in for six points. Great, a, nice throw. A big strike as Frazier is able to break about three defenders there for the touchdown, and the Seahawks are on the board. He's a two-way starter team uh, to Tim. And he's a team leader. He showed excellent recept receiving ability, and he's also a very good downfield blocker in addition to his receiving ability. Kick is up and good, so 44-7. to seven. Seahawks on the board here at the nest. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. H&H Auto Service is the home of the free inspection. H&H has been voted number one on Hilton Head Island and Small Business of the Year. H&H provides quality service for alignments, preventative and routine maintenance, and much more. Looking for an affordable car? H&H Auto is your full service dealer. All pre-owned cars are certified and come with a warranty. Everybody rides at H&H Auto because they finance in-house. Whether your car needs to look its best, run its best, or if you just need a new one, count on H&H to get you where you need to go. I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I bring a value to the team. I think that's what's most. It was the most. Yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Back here on the Friday night football zone. Well, the crowd here at the home opener for the Seahawks, they have something to get excited about now. 58 yard strike from John Beaver to Victor Frazier. 44 to six. Seahawks try the onside kick, but it's recovered by number 19, CJ Mack, the senior speedy wideout. Tim, I think it's time for a little bit of trivia question here tonight. Bring it. All right, let's see what, what you have here now. <laughs> No, I got it right here. Here's the question. Okay. Tim Singleton played at Hilton Head High School. What position did Coach Tim Singleton play when he played here in 1987? 
you're setting me up perfectly to finish the, the long-awaited finish of the story I started in the second, the first half. I'll give it to you right after this. Handoff as the second string quarterback for the Trojans. That is number 12, Raiden Benfield, the junior. He's in. Quarterback, that is what Singleton played. He actually took over quarterback. Bryant Kitty got injured. Brian Kitty was the quarterback for the Seahawks, and Brian Kitty got Wally pipped by Tim Singleton. <laughs> got injured and never saw the field again. So a flag on the play. And even more than that, Kitty was kidding this week because Kitty and Singleton are very good friends. They've been around the area forever. Kitty was telling us this week that even when he was injured, I mean, and we know that Tim Singleton has this swagger, so it's no surprise. Even as his friend was injured, Singleton went up to Kitty and said, you're never seeing the field again. <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. He was not wrong. Tim Singleton is good of a player as he has been a coach. Second and 18 here for the Trojans. Ben Field will keep it. Taken down by Kenny Robinson. Singleton led the Seahawks to a region title last year before a, a, a heartbreaking first round loss to South Aiken. Oh. You remember that? Oh, that, I do. That, that was, was that was about as, as tough a loss as, as I've seen. Between that and the Buford game last year, two really tough losses for the Seahawks. That had to be tough. I mean, South Aiken was out of the game. You, we almost count them out in Absolutely. the third period. Seahawks were dominating it. And you know they had an even they had an even easier second round opponent, but uh, that was last year. This is this this is this year. Third and sixteen, overthrown by Benfield. Benfield not quite the arm of the starter Chris Wilkins. So a 9:27 to go here. Seahawks make a stop, punting unit on the field for the Trojans. That's got to make uh, the assistant coaches for the Seahawks feel a little bit better. Terry Jones coaches the defensive backs. Leon Bush coaches the linebackers. It's his son that is a star player of, of, of the month here at, uh, on WHHI, who is sick tonight and not playing. He's the fourth quarterback that may have seen some action had he been on the field tonight. Punt on the play. Wilkins, big punt to Mora. Mora takes it at the 25, over the 30. Still on his feet, he cuts back over the other way. He's looking for blockers. Cuts back to the middle. Another cut back towards the middle, and he is pummeled by number 33. That is Cameron Cole, but a nice run back by Cliff Morrow. He is still down on the field after taking a hard hit. Well, he ran about 100 yards to gain 10, reversing his field twice, but a nice effort. 49-3 final up in Berkeley. Bluffton falls to 0-3. Injury timeout on the field. We'll take a break as well here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. while you were away, an incomplete pass on first down from Beaver to Jaquan Cohen. Clifford Morrow taken off the field, being attended to on the sideline. He is up and about, so he's looking to get back on the field. Always the warrior for the Seahawks. Second and 10 for the Hawks. Beaver in the shotgun. Handoff, well, fumble on the handoff, but Beaver picks it up. 
still over on his feet to about midfield. So a good something out of nothing there for Beaver. Very athletic play by Beaver. The ball gets knocked out of his hands by after faking the ball to the fullback up the middle in the sprint draw. He's able to recover it and get some positive yards out of it. Not exactly what the uh, quarterback coach had in mind. That's Kevin Osterstock. I'm sure he'd like to see him gain seven or eight yards in a different way. But nonetheless, third and three at midfield for the Seahawks. Beaver under center, two in the backfield. Beaver quick strike to Frazier. Worked last time for the touchdown. This time it works for the first down as Frazier is out to the James Island 41. So another first down here for the Seahawks. A nice throw from Beaver. Yeah, on the quick, quick slant in there. That'll make the receivers coach, Bob Jurenko, bring all smiles to his face. You're, you're, you're working it all in. Getting all the coaches <laughs> in there. Why not? It's better than talking about your tennis career. Oh, no, you didn't. John Beaver on the keeper. Beaver, 30, 25 yard line. A nice run. About a uh, 16 yard scamper by John Beaver. You really went there. I, I did. I did that go hurts. there. That hurts. <laughs> but it is well overdue after my uh, first week shirt shenanigans with you. So. Yes. Touche. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> As you see, Beaver on the keeper here. He's got a little. He's got a little. Uh, speed in him yeah he's vers he's a versatile quarterback he gets out there and uh he does have speed he has has some moves i think it's something that uh, this team can use right now beaver under center two in the backfield quick strike to morrow off his hands and incomplete well beaver is a senior too you know and he hasn't had uh, many snaps under the center. And I think it makes all the difference in the world. The more experience you have, just the, if you have any talent, the better you're going to get. You just have to give it a, a chance to develop. Second and 10 for the Seahawks. 7.24 to go here. 44-7 James Island. Beaver to the air, tries for Cohen, but tipped. Nearly intercepted by number 41, Quentin Williams. Incomplete third down for the Seahawks. If you're just joining us, a lot of turnovers in the first half. Chris Wilkins, the quarterback for James Island, had a big first half for 200 yards as the Trojans led 21 to 21 to nothing at the end of the half. They put up 23 in the third. Seahawks answer with a 50 yard, 58 yard strike from Beaver to Victor Frazier. That's where we're at 44 seven now as Beaver tries to connect with Frazier again, overthrown on third down. Frazier had his man beat, but a, a little miscommunication on the timing there, incomplete. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about experience. Had he just waited just a split second longer, he would have had he would have had uh, Frazier wide open in the end zone. And you saw Frazier kind of motioning to say my fault on that. Well, he never made it, looked up on the play. Well, he made a little move inside first. It was a, it was a straight fade pattern the whole way, and he made a little move inside, which, which knocked off the timing. Fourth and ten, Seahawks will go for it. Two out wide left, Frazier out wide right. A little pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins got. Little steam under him. Oh, it's going to be a penalty. And, uh, didn't get the yardage, but a penalty could be a. Uh, it's going to be a face, face mask face or a mask. horse collar. Yeah. Let's see what he got. Looked like he got his helmet, the back, the side of his helmet, or maybe uh, the back of the shoulder pads. Back of the shoulder pads. That's called a horse collar, and that's a penalty. So the drive continues for the Seahawks. While we got a second, while the yardage is being marked off. Let's thank uh, McDonald's restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty third pound Angus burgers and world famous fries. You'll be loving it at McDonald's restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. You think we can get them to deliver up here sometime? Oh, I wish. We're not that far from the, from the uh, well, actually, <laughs> we're, 
Uh, I, I was I was thinking uh, I was thinking about the Bluffton one. They might yeah. they, they got to go over a bridge. I don't think they'd come to us. But uh, first and ten at the eleven yard line. Beaver hands off inside. A good run by number thirty one. That is Ray Harrington, and he is Ray down Ray to Ray about Ray. the three yard line. So. Another score in the offing here for the Seahawks. Tim, I know it's 44-7, to but this is important for the Seahawks if they're going to have, you know, this, this, is, uh, uh, a, this is a game obviously out of the region, so it's not going to count towards the regional championship, but they need to get, get this momentum going and some confidence in their offensive line, their quarterback and running backs, just as a team in a whole. This is an important run, uh, time for them. Beaver handoff to Jenkins. Touchdown, Hilton Head Island. So... A nice drive, once again, led by senior quarterback John Beaver. Handoff to Lawrence Jenkins for the touchdown. 44-13, your score with 6:25 to go here in the game. Yeah, you got to be start thinking about next week what's going to happen when when you line up and who's going to be your quarterback, who's going to be your starters on the field. Not just the quarterback. I mean, you know, they're going to be looking. Uh, um, at the offensive line and defensive line, maybe there might be some changes. They got to go to Calhoun County on an away game next week. Extra and, uh, point up and good. And that's a regional game. 44-14, our score here at the Nest. Take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Been in a wreck? Bring your car to h, &H Auto Body at 17 Cardinal Road. At h, h Auto Body, you'll get a free estimate in their state-of-the-art facility. No matter the damage, the great team at h, h Auto Body will have your car looking great and back on the road in no time. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Tim, I take that back about the region. It's Calhoun County is not in, in the region. But last year we saw Calhoun County come here and play. They're a 1A team, and uh, they had a, a, a fellow by the name of, what was his name, Jeffries? Alshon Jeffrey. He's a wideout, for, uh, was for Calhoun County. Had committed to Southern Cal, was talking to Tennessee. Last second, ended up staying home with the Gamecocks. Got some action last night along with Buford product Devin Taylor. Yeah, he made, he made a, a, a couple of great plays. One of them in the end zone last night to prevent a touchdown and that win over North Carolina State. So, uh, fair catch taken by Patterson. That was an ugly game. Did you watch that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, great defense by, by South Carolina. You know, for everybody says SEC versus ACC, but. Probably the seventh ranked team coming out of the preseason in the SEC goes on the road to NC State, an NC State team that's supposed to be good this year, and they, they take home a victory with them. Well, let me tell you pure and simple what happened. That was just a defensive beatdown by South Carolina two years in a row. It just shows you how good the defenses are in the SEC and how good South Carolina's defense is. That's all it was. Three points in two years. I want to tell you, you know, they've got some athletes in the defensive, on that defensive team at South Carolina. We don't, we don't talk about the old ball coach and, and his defense, but no. Spurrier's put together a good defense there. Well, they've got five new assistant coaches there, too, and uh, it might take them a while to gel. But don't think for a second that North Carolina State does not have a good offense. They do have a good offense, and uh, that, that quarterback is going to uh, – Wilson is going to play well for them, and uh, they, they'll show promise. Uh, but that, that was a flat-out good defense, period. Plain Georgia, and simple. Georgia, South Carolina coming next week. That will be a good one. Yeah. So 44-14 to 14 here. Benfield in at quarterback again. For the Trojans, hands it off to number 33. That's Cameron Cole on the carry. A late flag thrown in on the play. That's poor old Tim Flags. They're coming from every direction yeah. out there. Well, we got a second. Personal foul. Yeah, on, on the Trojans. Well, we got a second. Want to thank Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control. Family owned and operated, protecting people's health, their property, and the environment for over 40 years. That's Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control. Another one of our supportive sponsors here on the Friday Night Football Zone. 
trying to find another adjective outside of fine. You know, I'm I'm a little uh, adjective dev- uh, void tonight. Well, six thousand words later, I can understand, Tim. Indeed, man in motion, hand off again. Clock winds down, coming down under six minutes to go here. No, I, I just love watching the, this offense. This is really this is this is something. I mean, you're running at a high school level. It's a shotgun offense, and you're running that wide receiver coming out in front of the quarterback every play with a fake, and then a, and then a potential handoff to the second running back in a in a scissors like motion. You know, uh, every, you know, we used to have a play at Penn State. We didn't have the quarterback six yards behind the line of scrimmage, but we did call it the Penn State snipping scissors. Quarterback keeper. QB down on the play as number 51. That is Nick Batista takes down the quarterback, Bratton Benfield. So, you know, I mean, it's a it's a well it's a nice offense run by the Trojans. You know, John Patterson's 30-year career, he's coached seven college All-Americans at the Citadel. And he's uh, coached at Lenore Rhine College. Um coached the Charleston Sand Sharks arena team and now he's with James Island punt on the field fourth and 19 ball over midfield Morrow takes it at his own 43 fights to midfield over midfield to the James Island 47 speaking about coaching Charleston teams we got an interesting team from Charleston tomorrow Charleston Southern goes up against the defending national champion Florida Gators, Tim. What do you think of that matchup? Purely for entertainment purposes only, <laughs> would you take the 73? Uh, is that what it is? 73 points. 73 right. points. <laughs> would you take it? Absolutely. I got to say, Charleston Southern, you know, <laughs> they they uh, miracle their way into a touchdown. That means Florida's got to put up 80 points. I don't know. I might, t- I might take Southern, Southern there. Completion on the field to Frazier from Beaver down to the James Island 35. Well, you know, this is the way you want to end if if you're the Seahawks. Not a good beginning, but the Seahawks have got some offense going here. Albeit, it might be against the second-string defenders, some of them anyway, but they're still getting some positive yardage. Yeah, they, they just need they just need something that's changed their whole ad, offensive attitude out here. And you're right, Tim. A little success will help. Beaver pitch out to Jenkins. Nice, nice setup. See if Jenkins can get some yardage. He tiptoes along the sideline, marked out at the 29 yard line. So about a six yard gainer there for Jenkins. Yeah, Lawrence Jenkins, 5'8", 175 pounds. He sh- puts a little. Dip into the inside, throws his hip to the outside, and then starts speeding down and just steps outside, or he would have gained a little bit more. But, um, you know, he gained over 500 yards last year. How about Georgia, Oklahoma State? Wow. At Oklahoma. Oh, it's in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go with Oklahoma State. Inside handoff to Ray Harrington. Harrington. He's the big defender, and he takes some guys with him to the 28, 27-yard line. So third and two. Speaking of the new stadium in Dallas, do you know how high the average height of an NFL punt is? No. You know, know they hit I, the scoreboard. Well, I, I know. Yeah, you got me there. I know how high the specs are. Right. That they, they're supposed to be, but how high is the average kick? No one's ever done a study on that, and that's the reason why you hit the scoreboard. Wow. Can you believe it? Tipped pass, almost intercepted on third and one. That, that's hard to believe. There's never been a study with on a height. With everything that the, the Elias Sports Bureau and, 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 yes. and, and uh, NFL films and – you, you would think that they would they would have given the punter a little love with a study. Never had a study on the average height of an NFL punt. So that's those specs, those 85 foot specs that guesswork. they're supposed to be there, is has been all guesswork for the last 60 yeah, years. Exactly. So the yeah, the you know fourth and one here for the Seahawks pitch out 
to Jenkins. Jenkins follows his blockers. First down and more inside the 20 to about the 19 yard line. So a nice run there from Jenkins. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. The NFL says they're just gonna do a do-over if if they hit the if they hit the scoreboard. Uh, I don't I haven't seen what college is gonna do. The Oklahoma, I believe Oklahoma BYU is there tomorrow, and uh, I I I just I wonder what they're gonna do. I haven't seen anything as far as what rule they're gonna fall. I guess they're figuring a college guy can't hit hit at that eye. Inside throw intercepted by James Island, number 35. That is Will Turner on the interception. Beaver tries to get Frazier on the quick out. Turner just steps in the lane, tries for Morrow, but Turner steps in the lane. Interception out to midfield. Well, that, may have caught the, that may have cost Beaver to start for next week. He was looking pretty good out there and comfortable. Comes, steps in and never even looked at the inside safety. One thing you want to do as a quarterback is, you know, you don't want to read the corners. A quarterback doesn't want to read the defensive corners. Corners always lie. What you want to look at is the inside safeties. They never lie, and he never sold a safety. He got away with that once, but not, you know, not, not, not a second time as the interception gives the Trojans the ball out near midfield. No, uh, no gain on first down for James Island. You have to know where that safety is, particularly if you're throwing inside. And if he's sit squatting on it, just better throw it another direction. As we mentioned before, next week Hilton Head Island at Calhoun County. Calhoun County upset the Seahawks last year with their big Division One players. Second and twelve for James Island. Benfield in the shotgun, flag on the play. Didn't Calhoun County have a few other players that went Division did. One last they year? Did. They had a, they had a big offensive lineman that ended up going to Tennessee. Right. Can't think of his name, but uh, yeah, they had. And then the quarterback ended up going to the Kentucky. Yes, too. the quarterback was headed to Kentucky, so they they had uh, they had three Division One prospects at least, and you know that was mid that was mid year when we saw them. They they yeah. may have. Gotten a couple more after that. Yeah, they were a big team for Class One A school. They didn't have a lot of players, but the ones they had were huge. Wow. Two thirty to go here in the game. Handoff, well read by the Seahawks defense. That's number fifty-five, Luke Barsness on the play. The well, sophomore. If, if you're the Seahawks, particularly on, on the defense, you're coaching for next week right now. And you know, you're getting some experience. You're getting your younger players into the game. And uh, that's what we're seeing right now for the first time uh, are some of those freshmen and sophomore out, out in the field. Third and 11 for the Trojans. Benfield, the keeper. He won't get it. He gets to the Seahawks 45, but that will be it. So while we got a second, I want to thank Tom, Tess, Wayne, Tony, our crew here in the press box, and also want to thank Brent Nelson up on the roof, our cameraman tonight. Great job on the camera, and I think Tom Jenkins with the uh, the graphics that we had earlier on in the pregame show and then start the start the game was just fantastic. Our replays um, have just been uh, Tess I, Rose all yeah. over it, all over it. So James Island will punt. That will be a penalty as Morrow never even had a chance to field the punt. He is uh, taken out before he could catch it. Well, he wasn't going to call a fair catch. He wanted to go over and make a play out of it. Just shows, you know, his enthusiasm. Uh, oh, no, they call it on the Seahawks. No, they call, excuse me, they call it on James Island. Yeah. Got to get my direction straight here. Forty-four to fourteen, under a minute to go here. Seahawks will try to do a little bit, 
a little bit more with the ball, a little bit more positive energy heading into next week at Calhoun County. Then September 18th, they're home for Wade Hampton. Next week, we've got Wade Hampton against Bluffton at Bobcat Stadium. See if Jeremy West and his crew can end the 11 game losing streak. So Beaver hits Cohen. Well, no, incomplete to Cohen. So. Second and 10 at the Seahawks 27. Well, I can't remember anybody scoring 44 points on the, the uh, Hilton Head Seahawks since I've been here on the island. No, this is uh, this is definitely a rarity, and I got to think this is not this is about the only time you're going to see it. As Tim Singleton will make the adjustments necessary coming into region play. Well, I guess in 04 and 05 when, when Tim Singleton uh, in his second and third year had. A couple of uh, one and ten and zero and eleven seasons, but he certainly turned it around for, for this school. You know, I, I see a lot of talent here. There's there's a lot of works in progress, that's for sure. They've got a lot of young guys, a lot of guys stepping into some roles they're not familiar with. Uh, but I see so, I see some potential here. I think we're going to see some things from these guys in region play. Yes. Beaver rolls out, goes deep to Clifford Morrow. Mm -hmm. About five yards over thrown tomorrow with 15 seconds to go here from the nest. Pretty nice arm, though. Nice throw. That ball had to travel about 55, 60 yards. Absolutely. Nice throw by the senior. Well, you got, I got to also hand it to the crowd here at, at the nest. They stayed. It, it was a tough game to watch, but this crowd stayed for most of the game. They're emptying out now, but uh, they were loyal fans tonight seeing the home opener and, and, and not seeing what they wanted to see out of the Seahawks as the Seahawks will fall to 0 and 2. But as I said, you know, going to Calhoun County, that could be the uh, the comeback game and I, I, I got to see Tim Singleton's team turning it around. There's just too much coaching and, and too much potential here. Beaver out of bounds, 6.8 seconds to go in the game. Chuck, uh, we're going to see a tough one next week. Wade Hamptons, they've got some, uh, they've got some skills, and uh, they beat Bluffton last year. It's going to be a tough game for Bluffton to break this 11-game losing streak. We'll wonder if we're going to see, if we're going to see um, Combs, if we're going to see Jenkins, or maybe even if we'll see the freshman. I mean, Singleton did it here tonight with Julian. Might see C.J. Frazier. Yes. Well, that, this should be the last play of the game as the Trojans will sit on the ball. Benfield takes the knee. Uh, is that flag necessary, sir? <laughs> 30 point. I mean, I know, you know, you want to be precise. You want to be, uh, you want to do your job, but 44 to 14, I'm just saying. Nonetheless, it's five more yards back uh, for the Trojans. Time will run out here. That'll do it. 44 to 14, your score here. Hilton Head Island falls to 0-2. James Island improves to 1-1. We'll take a break and wrap it up here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Proudly serving Hilton Head for over seven years. Whether you are looking to celebrate a special occasion, take the family out to dinner, or catch your favorite sporting team on one of our 12 televisions, Mellow Mushroom is the place to be. We offer gourmet pizzas, gigantic calzones, fresh hoagies, and crisp cold salads seven days a week. Check out our full service bar featuring over 100 different tiers. So next time the mood strikes, tell your friends and family. Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it.
so we built sport clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport clips. It's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, MarksHeatingAndAir.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500. Welcome to the Blind Cake Saloon. Come in and enjoy an American upscale bar with the best in dancing, live music, two full bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or if you're ready for a night out on the town, come on in and see what the buzz is all about at the Blind Cake Saloon. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek here at the Nest, Hilton Head Island Community Stadium. A rough night for the Hilton Head Island Seahawks, Chuck. But a night for some players to gain some experience and coaches get to look at some of their younger players. And they didn't know really what they had come into the season because they had lost so many uh, players from last year. So, uh, you know, the coaches and the players, this is, gives them opportunity to get ready for region play in a couple weeks. John, John Beaver looked pretty good. Jeff Homat didn't look awful. No, no, But he didn't. Beaver got them going on a couple of drives. Lawrence Jenkins looked pretty good. So, uh, all in all, you know, a 30 point loss to a 4A school. Not what they wanted, considering they beat them last year. Obviously not what they wanted. But as I said, I think when we come back here and, and see the start of region play, I think you're going to see some adjustments made by, by the Seahawks, and they will be a contender here in, in Class 3A Region 8. So that will do it here from the Nest. Next week we are at Bluffton as the Bobcats take on Wade Hampton. 44-14, to 14, your final score here. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek for the Friday Night Football Zone. Tim, I'll be looking forward to next week on WHHI-TV. Good night, everybody.